All right. It's number 40. It's number 40? 40 even. Oh, wow. That's amazing. We Thank got a you. new, a little bit of a new camera setup, guys. A little more front angle. Frontal. Act, yeah, full. full frontal snarf. It's actually like three quarter frontal. Yeah. And we got some new audio set up. So hopefully this will take less editing and the audio will be a little better for you guys. Well, that's what we're hoping. Yeah. But it doesn't always work out that way. <laughs> way to as, be. As we know. Negative. Well, you know. I'm hoping it'll work. A pillar just of fine. negativity. I think, well, that's not true. Gerald Snyder. I think it will work just fine. Archduke of, of Canterbury. Negatory. <laughs> hey, so real quick. Yes. So I'm gonna, we're going to get right into it. We're going to get into it? Because we were told this weekend that cut the chit chat. We don't want you guys catching up yeah. with each other. We were told to uh, knock back the chatter, dial yeah. it down. Like, hey. I don't want you guys to have this as like catch up time between between Jerry and Chris. Yeah, I don't want to hear about your kids or soccer practice. Well, guess what? I have soccer pictures tomorrow at five. So there you go. You like that? Does that no. mean I have soccer pictures at five tomorrow? You do. I didn't know about it. Well, you do now. So we're, we're now we're talking about the things that we're not supposed to be talking yeah, about. Yeah, but all of your kids have to be there at five tomorrow for pictures. All right. You can bring mine. Okay. All right. I can. <laughs> I can if you need me to. Um, real quick, yes. I want to get at something that has bugged me. Cut to the core of you? It has cut to my bones. Have you? Would you say that it grinds your gears? It grinds my ear gears. Your ear gears? Yeah, gears on your ears. <laughs> like springs and things? Steampunk, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, and it's it's cup holders. I hate... What do you mean? Well, vehicle cup holders are the worst thing in the world. They don't hold any size cup every single cup that i put in there or bottle or anything bobbles around falls all over spills everywhere and then they put these little rubber things in there they could be little rubber nodules that stick out or they could be the flaps and they put them there to to make you think like we're gonna do our job the little rubber uh Pustules, if you would call them. Yeah, <laughs> I would. I wouldn't. <laughs> I wouldn't call they, them. They work pretty good in my truck. No, well, mine don't, and they don't work well in the van. They don't work well in any vehicle I've ever had, and crap spills all over, and I hate them. Yeah. Okay. I think it's ridiculous. Are you, are you on the verge of p- positing a solution here? Or? No, I would love somebody to invent something like you know what? Um, what was that? You remember the infomercial with that socket? It was oh, like the Gator Grip. Gator Grip. I bought one of those. Gator Grip. Complete garbage. Why can't they have something like a Gator Grip, though? I mean, you don't have to put any torque on, on <clears> a me, cup let holder. Let me ask you this, though. Is the real problem the wiggling around in the cup holder or yes. the sloshing of the motion of the vehicle? Because I've never had this problem in my truck. Really? Uh, no, because of those. I feel like every vehicle I'm ever in. Jewels I know what you mean, because my they, truck they has the same thing. Good. No. It, it, there is not a single cup holder that will hold a Gatorade bottle. Never. <laughs> then you have the skinny water bottles. That's what I got those lids. those don't stay on there. They don't. But I have a, a large Yeti and that fits in there perfect. Really? Yeah. They're like designed for it. <laughs> and then you have these It's a Yeti. <laughs> Yeti's it's are actually not. For it's an Ozark trail. Better. Well, they're five dollars. Economical. <laughs> um so mine has like two cup holders on the side that then merge into a third cup little holder in the middle that doesn't fit anything nothing fits in there and you know what i put in there change you know what happens to the change it spreads out to the other yeah, sides that's a problem and then cups don't hold okay correctly so i happen to know a guy man i just hate these cup holders <laughs> i happen to know a guy that designs the geo stabilizing turrets for military machine guns like a raven i don't know what they call them but it's a geo stabilizing turret okay yeah, so yeah. if we can take that technology, that million dollar technology, and put them in a cup holder, and put it into a cup holder that holds your drink, but yeah. then also is stabilizing, yeah, mm-hmm. as you drive. But it would have to stabilize the fluid, not the vehicle. Well, okay, I see what you're saying. There's some fluid dynamics going on here. It's a hydraulic situation. <laughs> <laughs> um, all I wanted to bring up is that I think cup holders are the worst in vehicles because they are not. What I want to happen is to have a synchronized size. Swimming. No, 
Oh. Th- that is a cool sport. And I would call it a sport. Um, I want it to be the same across the board for bottles and cup holders. Right. Like get the cup holder industry and the bottle industry to work in tandem. Congruently. Yeah. And say like, hey, let's, we can work together on this problem this. and make a standard size bottle and cup holder so that everyone's happy. Well, that's all I'm saying. That's all I wanted something. to bring up. I think I am onto something and it's been bugging me for weeks and I've been meaning to bring it up and I keep forgetting, but I made a note that says cup holders and vehicles are the worst on top. If we're doing our grinds, my gear segment, I let's, have something. Let's to get add. it. All right. So the All cup right. holders are grinding your gears. They are. Um, here's the thing that's really been bugging me lately. All right. I'm concerned for you. All right. This is, it's, it's a little bit insane. I think it's a global conspiracy. Okay. All right. About six months, previous to six months ago. Okay. So I'd never. Like eight months? Yeah. Forever in history, oh, before okay. six months ago. Okay. I had never heard anybody use the term slides when referring to sandals with no backs. Nope. And now every single person I, I hear when they're referring to sandals has been calling them slides. That's a fashion thing. But what, where did it come from? Uh, the fashion industry. It did not exist six six months ago. And but it, uh, I think it did exist. It's just that nobody in the Midwest used that term. If you went to New York, I bet you that you would hear it or L.A. Okay, fair <clears> enough. <throat> so I'm not saying that the word didn't exist and it was just thrust upon me yeah. in the world in a conspiratorial fashion. What I do have issue with is that everybody cont- starts using this word now and just acting like that's the way that like we've it. been saying it forever. <laughs> I, I have never heard this. You've never heard... I, everybody's no. saying it now and just acting like so wait, it's not I, a new thing. Like, am I wearing slides? Yeah. Is this a slide? That's the, a slide, This Jerry. Nike sandal? Uh, yeah, and it's fine if people want to call them slides. Hmm. Whatever. It's annoying. But if you want to call it that, call it that. Just don't act like you've been calling it that your entire life <laughs> and not from six months ago to recent. Right. I, I haven't. And two people Who that are have, these? I brought that up to that have been saying it. And I'm like, where? Why are you saying that now? All are they of a sudden? fashionistas? I don't know. Sure. Mm, I'm like, like, why are you saying that all of a sudden now? Because you've never said that word before in your entire life. Yeah. And they just act like, oh yeah, that's what I've always called them. Yeah. I'm like, well, nope. Heard it once. <laughs> it grinds my gears, Jerry. Okay, I agree with you because I think it's ridiculous. Call it a sandal. I like that segment. We should have a new segment, but we can't call it grinds my gears because it's a direct ripoff. Yes. Of a family, family guy. guy. Yeah. Let's call it grinds uh, my snarf. Stretches my springs. <laughs> yeah, stretchy like, springs. You don't it's a bad you, situation. You don't stretch out a spring. No, it never it never goes, goes back. back. Yeah, no. it doesn't. Um, That's farmer stuff right there. It is, and also like me taking apart little things and stretching the spring, and then like a pen. In school, I'd I feel take like pens I always with. had that issue when I was younger in school. I'd always be pulling the pens apart and yeah. stretching them. I'm like, why do I keep? <laughs> why do I do why this? Why am I doing that? Why do I do this? I just was allowed to use a pen. <laughs> I just ruined, I've this ruined pen. it. <laughs> like I only could use a number two. It's, like, it's amazing this. at uh, school age, like in the ages that you're in middle school primarily, but also in high school. So how like much of your life seven through twelve? Yeah, how much of your life is focused around ten to thirteen? Writing utensils. <laughs> A lot. You're always playing with writing utensils. You're getting different ones. You're getting new ones. You're taking them apart. You're oh. building bows and arrows out of them. You're playing pencil wars. Mechanical all... pencils were yeah. like a, a like an awesome thing to us. And then I kept breaking the. They're utterly the wordless. Mechanical pencils. I agree. Unless I've never you're drafting. Had an adequate mechanical pencil. I mean, if you're a drafter, yeah. you need a mechanical pencil. Do drafters still exist? It's all done on the computer now. Hmm. Yeah, you're true. That's that's true. I don't know. I don't know either. Um, next. <laughs> so um, we're going to jump right into it? Yeah, right into the news. Okay. And this is what I, I heard this, uh, uh, again, a couple of weeks ago, and I forgot to bring it up on the previous podcast, number 39. You should check it out. Um, it's 30, about... Uh, yeah, 39. Is that the um, Wizard World Recap? Yeah. Check that out. And then, first, before we say anything, go over to our uh, relatively new YouTube channel, youtube.com slash narcomics. We got a lot of great content up there. We got a Wizard World video recap. We're getting more which and is more. Great. We got uh, a great um, Rob Paulson 
singing uh, Yakko's World, the new updated version, yeah. live just for us on the podcast. Um, we got all of our podcasts are on there. And <clears throat> since Wizard, our traffic has really noticeably increased on YouTube, so that's it, really nice. It has. And, um, and people have been going back and watching the podcasts. Like they came in on the Wizard video. And they've been going back and watching the podcast, which they should. It's yeah. fun. Um, I think. So the, if you're a new listener, awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, come back again. Yeah, we yeah. don't just talk about what grinds our, what stretches our springs. <laughs> there you go. You got it. <laughs> Branding. Um, so this is what I want to talk about. We didn't talk much about the Star Wars D twenty three trailer that came out. Um, I had brought it up, and the we Mandalorian kinda, trailer. No. The, the new D23 release that they had of of the Star Wars, um, the uh, Rise of Skywalker. Oh, I don't know that I saw it. Really? The, like, is there a new, new one? Yeah, they showed different stuff. Oh, man, I didn't see it. It's been all over the we interwebs. We have a pop culture podcast, Jerry. What are Jerry? you doing? What are you doing with your life? It's been a busy couple of weeks, I guess. You know, don't blame it on trees, okay? I was blaming it on all our Snarf Talk road trips. Yeah, well, don't blame it on that either. Blame it on the rain. That's what you need to blame it on. <laughs> Freaking rain. Um, blame it on the... Eh, 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 so eh, in this Star heart. Wars trailer, um, a lot of things happen that we've seen before, but the biggest thing that came about was that there was a dark ray. Okay. Um, and they showed ray... In a cloak, um, she looked a little grayish, like emperor, like emperor, like, and she had a red lightsaber. It was like a double lightsaber that came up in front of her, and then she like flipped it down to a double lightsaber, hmm. which makes sense because she's been use she's always used used a, a staff before bow staff, if yeah. you will. Um, but it was really cool because she had it in front of her, and then goes down to two lightsabers that's not really what i wanted to talk about i it's a awesome trailer everyone needs to look at it they dropped it at d23 so like it was a new release that was a couple of weekends ago what i wanted to bring up is that on a podcast we listened to they had puppeteers from the star wars universe on they were interviewing a puppeteer so in all of the star wars they've they've been using like actual puppeteers to maneuver bb8 okay a little round droid yeah um so some of it is is cgi but a lot of it is puppeteering it's an a physical object that they're moving around like a cart okay um on screen so when they're filming there is a man moving this little object around and he's wearing a completely green suit but while they're filming the the actors are interacting with bb8 and the actor behind the puppeteer, I should say, behind BB-8 is making the noises. Oh, that's awesome! Of the of BB-8 while they're interacting with each other, so he's like literally like beep beep boop boop. boop. <laughs> so he's Beaker. It's me, to me, 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 me. To me, that's incredible, like professionalism. Like that guy should get paid the most. Well, not I, no. I was thinking from hard the, acting. It is, but I was thinking from the other actor's oh, perspective yeah. to to completely <laughs> ignore, screen them out, pay no attention to the man behind the curtain while he's making ridiculous <laughs> noises in a green man outfit behind a fake prop, and he's making beep beep boop sounds, and they're still acting like oh BB eight. So you want to know what's really crazy I, about that? Is like, I think that's amazing. Like for any Star Wars fan or nerd out there, like. That's that would be their dream to be on a Star Wars set, For even sure. if you got to be that guy. Yeah, but if you're not like a huge Star Wars or nerd fan, yeah, and you went home to your like wife at the end of the night and you're like, "What'd you do today?" She's like, "A couple beeps, a couple boops." <laughs> Made a little beeps. What do you do for beeps. a living? Like at a cocktail party? Like in your you're in a backyard barbecue <laughs> at your for your, your kid's school friends. And he's like a dentist, or a, he, say he's a heart surgeon. You're standing at the and grill. And he's at the grill, and he's like, yeah, man, you're really, <clears throat> you're really, uh, you're a heart surgeon, so you really know how to handle that, and you know, yeah. you're grilling it up nice. Like, Cardiac. What do you do for a living? Oh, yeah. I I, I push a ball around and go, boop, boop, That's going to be difficult. Yeah, very difficult. But when you say, oh, I was in a Star Wars film, 
That's what you got to do. You gotta say, <laughs> that's oh, the I'm an actor in Star Wars. Yeah. They're like, really? that's the difference. But I, I really do think it's incredible that, um, like Daisy Ridley interacting with BB-8, you know, you have to literally get into a, a space, space. Yeah. where y- you think that ball is a actual droid in front of you. You can probably like, like anything else. Right. So after a while, it probably just feels real. Yeah. And you get numb to the fact of like the movie magic stuff, but it's just every now and again, you probably step back. Maybe when another actor is acting yeah. in the scene and you look over and you see the guy going beep, boop, boop, beep. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the thing. If any of us filmed something in our regular day life or tried to, like we've been trying to film things, right? Yeah. Talking to a camera is weird. It's very weird. Um, trying to act like that is reality is weird. But doing that on a on a big format like that, I just I don't get it. I think it's very strange. Like if we try to do that in our own life, all we would do is laugh for three days, and then we would probably then get numb to it and be like, right. "All right, let's." I think the hardest right, get part this over with. of filming, and I didn't really feel it so much at Wizard. But I felt it more on our newest Snarf Talk road trip, which we're going to talk about pretty soon. Um, is if you feel like self, like you feel dumb, yeah, doing it. You do. And like you feel like all these people are looking at you and like judging you for what you're doing. Right, and I judge myself hard. I judge myself real hard about anything. And like I was watching um, the Wizard World video earlier today, and. Uh, I was just like, man, I could have been so much more normal than that. I just, it looks tense to me. Like it looks, it, it doesn't come across that way on the video. I don't think, but to me, I know how it was when it was videotaped and how it comes across and then like how I felt during it. And it just needs to be way more normal. I just don't think it needs to be that weird. I don't think it is that weird. There are so many people out there right now that are doing the exact right. same thing. But what surprised me is that Wizard World, we saw like one guy. Yeah, and nobody at, at the Renaissance Fair. Yeah, nobody videotaping this stuff. Like, what are you guys doing? You could capitalize on this. Right. Like we are. Yeah. That's Complete why. Complete capitalization. You don't actually have to do that because that's why we exist. We do it for you. Right. We are the documenters of your future. Of your now. Of your now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All of right. Your past. Next news. News. So there was a movie screened at Wizard World. Yes, there was. His by a man named John Travolta. John Travolta. He was there with a movie called The Fanatic. Right. And that w- that movie was directed by Fred Durst. Yes. Fred Durst of from the Limp Biscuit. Limp Biscuit fan. Were you a, a big biscuit fan? No. I wasn't um, really not much. I mean it it was okay. I was because it was just it was big when I was in high school. Yeah. I I mean I liked the songs that were out and I went along with it, but Three I Three Dollar Bill I, y'all? I would not call him a fan. Chocolate starfish and the hot dog flavored water. Yeah, that was a big one. Yeah. Um so after that came out, I went to a Metallica concert. They had the Summer Sanitarium tour in early 2000s, and Limp Biscuit was on the bill. It was a whole, it was an all day concert. Literally started at nine o'clock in the morning, and it went until midnight. You know, Metallica was the last like two hours, but Limp Biscuit was there, and during their show, they got hit by two. Di- Fred Durst was hit by two different shoes. And booed off the stage. I really... <clears throat> and they left. I they think it's weird because... literally left the stage. When Limp Bizkit came on the scene, they were very popular. Yeah. And then, like, all of a sudden... It just ended. It just ended. And then... But it it didn't end like they went to obscurity. Like, people all of a sudden just flipped and, it like, it became... Like, popular to hate Popular them. to hate them. It yeah. did the same thing with Nickelback. Nickelback they has huge. been They became popular to hate. And it's just odd... But Fred Durst has been doing these movies. This is his like third movie, right? It's his third directed movie. Yeah, yeah. He, he's had a couple that were uh, decently successful. Yeah. Um, this one though, um, so this uh, it, it screened at Wizard World and it um, came out to theaters uh, last weekend. Was its opening weekend in fifty two different theaters, 
and it made a total of three thousand one hundred and fifty three dollars and seventy one. But to be fair, it was more of a meant to be more of a direct to VOD movie. Mm. Like all, a lot of these direct to video movies, they still screen them in movie theaters because that's how you get in contention for awards. But in fifty two places, it made well, three thousand dollars. That's what. Well, okay. <laughs> It made three thousand dollars. The highest grossing uh, movie theater was seven hundred. Uh, Where did I put it? Uh, seven hundred and seventy-six dollars and thirty-one cents. Oh, I mean that's quite a bit of tickets. Really? Uh, yeah, ten bucks a pop. That's seventy tickets. So that doesn't still that doesn't might have even been, fill the might have been one screening. Come on, quit being so positive over this. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Well, it's I did a hear some, flop. a couple of ridiculous things. Um, some of the writing in the movie was referential towards Limp Biscuit. Like there's a scene where they're playing no Limp Biscuit in the background and that one guy and one guy goes, Yo, is that Limp Biscuit? That's sick or something like that. That's a line dialogue line in the movie. Something along those lines. Okay. Well And John Travolta you know, looks really odd in it. He does. But it He's got a bowl cut. Didn't get terrible so I read No, it, there was other reviews. That I read were a review from the A V Club, which is positive. like always horribly hard on everything really like the av club is they're like hate everything is that the audio visual club or <laughs> yeah and a very popular website for okay. movie reviews and i want to say the article that i read wasn't that they were making fun of those things but they said overall su- i think it was more saying like surprisingly it's not that terrible yeah and then i i read an, another article later that uh was talking about how john travolta was actually a pretty good character. It looked, I watched um, like a little clip. He looks really weird and creepy. Yeah. Which is what he needed to be, I guess. Yeah. And he kind of seems like he might be in real life. In so. real life. He likes trannies. That's the thing. What? Dude, you can't say stuff like that. Why? Well, you can't say that that's a negative thing. Oh, it's not. <laughs> you can't say it in a negative connotation. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Moving on. Okay. <laughs> Um, next news article. This, this one I read, this is completely like weird for me to talk about, but I think it's hilarious. We got a small issue. What? This angle, my ridiculously unshaven beard. Yeah. You need to take care of it. It makes it look like I'm missing teeth because of the hair. You're not? No. Oh, I thought you were. I'm going to next, next podcast, clean shaven. Yeah, really? Mark my words. Okay. Not clean shaven, but I'm. Gonna oh, take, okay. So now you're gonna take back. I'm gonna take it down said. to stubble. So you're lying to us. Uh, that for me is clean shaven. Well, no, there is clean shaven, and then there is stubble. Okay, stubble. Okay, but that's a lot to get rid of. There. Yeah, it is. You haven't been at stubble in a long time. I'm well, not that long, but anyway, moving on. Next one. This is just random news that I saw that I thought was uh, funny because we talked about the whole Melby like abusing. Uh, Melba Toast? Yeah, Melba Toast. That's exa- exactly what you called her. Uh, she was from the Spice Girls. But this is... Color to your world. It, this is in a, in a similar vein, but Heather Locklear. Oh. You know her, right? Yeah. So she was a big deal in the yeah. 90s. Big, big deal. And... Uh, what was she in? 90210. Okay. Wasn't it? Wasn't it 90210? I don't know. Melrose Place. She was in Melrose that, Place. That's what it was. Melrose Place. The so, poor man's 90210. Is that the way they... I, I never watched either one of them. Okay. Well, Heather Locklear was a big deal in the 90s. She was a very pretty lady that did a lot of things. Mm-hmm. Well, she pleaded no contest to eight misdemeanor counts, five counts of battery against a police officer, one count on an emergency personnel, and two counts of resisting, obstructing, or delaying a peace officer. Jeez, what'd she do? She was hitting her boyfriend. Wow. And then denied the fact that she was hitting her boyfriend and tried to push all of the emergency personnel that the guy called and police officers away. And she was sentenced to 120 days in jail. But wow. Wow, she ain't going to serve. She, what she did get was 30 days in rehab in lieu of the jail time and three years probation. You want to know something crazy about her? <laughs> I think that's insane. Following Dynasty, because she was on Dynasty. Oh. Locklear had a starring role in this movie, The Return of Swamp Thing. 
Really? For we wh- saw those pants. Yeah, we did. <laughs> you, if you want to see the pants, go watch our uh, YouTube video, pants. Wizard World Recap. Uh, the Return of Swan Thing, for which she won a satirical Razzie Award for Worst Actress. No kidding. Yeah. A Razzie Award. Yeah, she won a I Razzie. I need to watch this movie. You've never seen that? I haven't. Oh, I have. Yeah. yeah. It's a good She's one. in it, and you've seen it. Yeah, I've seen it, but I don't remember her in it. Who was hmm. in the first one? Hmm. I don't know. That yeah. was a long time ago. I don't know. That's a good one, though. I have that one on video. See, I was... She gets naked. Who? The girl in the first Swamp Thing movie. Oh, um, I was always the TV show guy. You oh, never yeah. saw the TV show. I've seen it, yeah. Oh, I thought you said you hadn't. No, I've seen it. I loved it. Yeah. I think that the costume and design of Swamp Thing was a thousand times better in the the TV show. She's not done a lot recently. No, because she's, you know, got some abuse problems. I mean, she was in Franklin and Bash. Mm. She was in Hot in Cleveland. Eh. Was she, though? She was in the reboot of Melrose Place. Yeah, it's mostly just like uh, like guest starring on sitcoms. Mm. Yeah, That's not much. There. Anyway, I thought it was a funny story because she was abusing a man and got jail time for it. Yeah, well. Because she's an abuser. Yeah. Um, also, on the same note, Kevin Hart got in a big accident. Yeah, I heard that. What I didn't get the details though. So is he, he all right? Got he had a severe back injury. Got some surgery on it. Seems to be doing well. But he was driving a uh, like a nineteen sixty something Barracuda oh, that he bought that's himself. Like my favorite car. He bought himself the car for his fortieth birthday present. Um, but he was letting somebody else drive it on Mulholland Drive. Never go on Mulholland Drive. I mean, I thought that was like a fact everybody knew. Like, you never go on Mulholland Drive. Yeah. That's where you go to die. And they almost did. Because they were going around all the curves. I don't know if they went too fast. What happened? They went off in this, like, steep embankment, rolled the car. And everybody was injured, but seems to be doing well. Um that's all. But the the cool part, well, I don't know if it's a cool part, but it's an interesting fact. He's been the highest paid comedian for two years in a row. That doesn't surprise me. He's gigantic. He's gigantic in movies. I still don't think I no, would no. consider him in a comedian <clears throat> He's platform. even bigger in stand-up comedy. Really? Is stand-up really? comedy for him is bigger than movies. Really? Yeah, he sells out, like, football stadiums. Because of the movies, though. I don't know. He's been a really popular stand-up comic for a long time. Really? Yeah. Two years I in a row movies, he's been making... The movies are more from the comedy than the Dude's other been around. making like $120 million a year. Yeah. Yeah, he's a big deal. That is a lot and, of uh, money. And check out his podcast with... I want to say it was on Joe Rogan. He's a super cool guy. Oh, yeah. We talked about that yeah, in an Super episode. nice guy. Really smart. Good businessman. Down to earth. Yeah. Very good. Cool, dude. That was actually quite a good and uh, um, surprisingly, surprisingly good because he was very down to earth and um, very down to earth, but very um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like genuine. Yeah, but like um, he makes you want to go out and do stuff. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, like inspiring, inspiring, very inspiring guy. He was at the time because he was talking about you know going out and doing what he loved, and you can anybody can do it. Yeah, if you put the time in. Um. That's all. Okay. On him. This is the big one I wanted to talk about. I've talked about it before. There's a movie coming out with Joaquin Phoenix. Joaquin it. Phoenix. The Joker so, movie. So back to the Phoenix family. Okay. I'd, yeah. Okay. River. Joaquin. River. Moon Knight. Moon. Something. Is it just Moon? Uh, Journey. Moonrise. Kingdom. S- uh, the Sunset. Boulevard. Yeah. I'm going to look that up really quick because... <laughs> Do we really need to? Yeah. We've because talked about them Because they grew up before. in a cult. Yeah, and we talked about how weird of a cult they were in. And Joaquin Phoenix like says, like, yeah, it was a weird cult. Yeah. I just think it's so crazy. Why? I don't know. But anyway, what about the Joker movie? Because okay. uh, it's getting a lot of action right now. It is. So the Joker film got its first round of reviews from critics... Uh, after it debuted at the Venice Film Festival over the weekend. It's got a lot of positive critiques. Eight minute standing ovation. Yeah, that was my last thing I was going to talk about. Well, I just jumped straight into it. 
eight minute standing ovation great after the reviews film ended. people are saying it's incredible it's defining of the character it's everything so yeah they said it's uh will be the best film adaptation of a comic book character you've seen ever it's what they that's what they say that, that from the Ve- venice film festival i wonder then, how true to the comics it's gonna be though that's probably funny. not not at all probably um but uh matt hughes he's from the forbes magazine okay he said you say that like it's like an unheard of magazine no i didn't mean it that way okay um he said the fact is everyone is going to be stunned by what phoenix phoenix accomplishes because it's by it gosh i can't read because it's what many thought was impossible a portrayal that matches and potentially exceeds that of the Dark Knight Clown Prince of Crime. Well, think about it, though. The whole movie is based on him. So the amount of depth they can add exactly. to the character. Like, in The Dark Knight, I would still maintain Joker while it was... A, a lot of people want to say he was, like, the main character of The Dark Knight. But he really wasn't. No. I wouldn't say he was the main character at all, but... Um... He provided the backdrop for the movie Mm -hmm. through his you know chaotic antics but it wasn't about him so it was a very surface based character in the dark knight so you see how he has no rhyme or reason and and let me be clear i think that's what made it better it because you didn't know anything about the character all you got were bits and pieces of backstory that were all lies yes and that will what what was that was what was interesting about that character. So that's what I think drives this movie to be better yeah. because you see a character like him and you want to know more about it. And then this movie, although not the same type of character, it just goes by the same name. Now you're getting that surface of who the character was and how he became that way. Right. Um, so, of course, it's going to be a better adaptation of the Joker character only because you get to know from the ground up how he was created or how it was created in him to be that way. So I think it is, you know, th- there's there's so much more story to work with for the Joker because it is only his movie. But uh, in The Dark Knight, you know, you want to know so much more about him. That's what's interesting. And like you said, it's it's all lies. So you don't know what's true, what isn't true. Like, wh- how did he become this this person that has no rules, has no rhyme or reason, like just does what he does to cause chaos? This movie is going to show you that. It's going to show you the build of that person that becomes so, like, um, what's the word? Like a anarchist. Yeah. You know, like. Anarch- chaos artist. Yeah. And I'm I'm very excited about it. Yeah. The, when I started reading this, I've always been excited about this movie, but I was always also like a little hesitant and worried because I didn't know, you know, what direction they were going. I know it's a uh, like an indie film and a little bit cheaply made, which is perfect. What gets me more excited? Yeah, I think that's what's going to lend more to the movie than making it big big budget. I agree. Yeah. I when does it come out? But. It's- it's not till like November, I think. Oh. Either October or November. I'm not. I'm not 100 percent sure. I can look that up. But um, I'm. I'm more and more excited because everybody keeps talking about like how Joaquin Phoenix played the character, how, like his acting in and of itself. That's what makes me excited because everything he's done that I've watched, I really, really enjoy. Well, I honestly think like in a way he's almost perfect to play that character. He's just odd enough. So it comes out October 4th. Okay. It's not too long. Soon. Yeah. He's just odd enough. He's just goofy enough. He is. And even in his he can be like, dark. own life, he's weird. Yeah. Even in like um, movies that he's not meant to be dark in, he has a weird way of twisting those characters to be a little bit dark. Yeah. That's interesting. He almost does that in uh, Her. Yes. And I feel like he almost does that in a lot of stuff he's in. Even something is poppy popcorn flick is signs he has a way of making like that character just a little bit creepy yeah you know what i mean so yes. i think he's like a creepy guy yeah there's so this this is funny there's always been he a doesn't video doesn't walk the line though that movie's amazing oh my gosh it's so good i saw that movie. i've watched that movie so many times um 
there's a a video a guy took of the movie her when he's laying on a bed sideways but i don't know if he was like crying or whatnot but throughout the video he keeps zooming in to he's watching a tv and he keeps zooming into the to uh uh phoenix's forehead and it it looks upside down because he's laying sideways and he's zooming into his forehead and his forehead like wrinkles in his forehead start creating a face so you see his eyes and his eyebrows and then below his eyebrows is his forehead and it makes like a nose and a mouth and it's really strange, but it's super hilarious to look at because the mouth is moving and the nose kind of moves and his eyes are blinking up upside down. It's really funny. And there's just a guy laughing the whole time. If you could find that video, you need to watch it. It's a complete waste of time. It's like a minute and a half long. It's worth it. Okay. Because Joaquin Phoenix's turn <clears throat> forehead turns into a face. There you go. That's really funny. <laughs> Um, so yeah. anyway, yes, uh, Joker movie, all in, on board. Yeah, I really am too. And the good old dude will be back by then, so we can bring him out on a little bit of yeah, Star He will be. When's he trip. coming back? Not Soon? Till, yeah, like two weeks from now. Two weeks? Yeah. Gosh, he needs to quit his job. <laughs> you know, I just we need to keep him on retainer as guest, just off to the side, not pay him. We already have to. Well, okay, we can't pay him because... All of our salaries going to Alex. So right, yeah, no, he won't get paid. He just has to. Which, by the way, by the way, there's been like a lot of work in the Snarf Talk universe the last two weeks, like a lot of video and cutting, editing. Well, your work, like your work. Where's <laughs> Alex been for any of that? Yeah, good question. I don't. I, I haven't seen him around once. Never saw him do Michael anything. Hasn't been around. No. Well, Michael's always quiet in the back room. You never hear him. But I mean, I think Alex. His strep, Michael's strep throat has turned into he just abandoned us. That and walking pneumonia. <laughs> yeah. That's bad stuff. Yeah. Have you ever had it? No, no. I've had a walking taco. I had one at Wizard World. <laughs> yeah, you did. It was pretty decent. Yeah. It wasn't filling enough, though. No, no. Could have had a better lunch. <laughs> Next news. I had a poke bowl. The first day you did. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Second day, and three tacos. And some food stand sushi. Yeah, how'd that work? It wasn't great. <laughs> no? You didn't like it? <laughs> the poke You bowl. didn't say that at the time. The poke bowl was good. Yeah, you, I did oh, say you, that at the time. I threw away most of the roll. Yeah, you kept good. offering it to me. Like, are you sure? Uh, you want some of this? You sure you want this? It's too? so <laughs> good. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't want any of it. That reminds me of the Californians. And we were talking about the Californians a few Californians. episodes. Californians. It's. I was watching some of it today, actually, and he kept saying, "Devin, what are you what doing are you here?" Doing? That's <laughs> so funny. Honestly, like that is one of. The, I watched Saturday Night Live at the time when yeah, that was coming. I did and that too. Was on and I, yep. I was a big fan of it, but <clears throat> that skit has aged so much better. Like oh at the gosh. time, I thought it was hilarious, but now to go back and watch the clips, it's just ten times funnier. And I think it's because of what you know that all those actors have gone on to do now. Yes. Because, like, Bill Hader's oh in gosh. a whole different world now. Fred Armisen, yeah. uh, Maya Rudolph. Like, they're all... When you watch uh, Bill Hader in a... They, on YouTube, there's the dress rehearsal skit of one of those. Um, and Bill Hader is losing it the entire time. He's it, got a big movie coming out this weekend. Yeah, It. It. Number two. Chapter two. But watching him in the dress rehearsal... <laughs> Trying to keep it under the, like together, but he just loses it the whole time laughing because he knows how ridiculous it is and how accurate it is to a lot of Californians. Sorry, that's why they do it. I have I, I shouldn't. It's kind of embarrassing, but when, before we came here, Marley, we were watching a, a trailer on TV for It Chapter Two. Oh yeah, and we watched, and she goes, so, and it said like the final chapter or something like that and she goes what are they gonna they're gonna make a movie just on every chapter <laughs> just because there are only two chapters and i'm like no. i don't think they mean the chapters of the books <laughs> it doesn't go by book <laughs> chapters because that book is huge i've never read it it's like 700 and maybe 800 pages something like that i haven't read it either but uh, it's big it's hmm. very big not a big fan 
I like Stephen King. I mean, I liked... Bought a Stephen King book when we were at Wizard World. Yeah, you did. I liked the old It movie from the 80s. We watched it a lot. I have it on VHS. But uh, Of course you do. You know, meh. Yeah? I've, I went back and rewatched it. Did it's you watch the new one? No. I didn't either. No. It's supposed to be very good. Yeah, I'll check it out. That one Skarsgård guy is in there. I like, um, I like those kind of kid adventure movie things. Yeah, kid friendly. Fun. Not kid friendly, but I mean, like it's kind of got a, like a Stranger <laughs> Things vibe to it. Yeah, the original Stranger Things. Yeah, basically. It. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, more news. Just one more thing, I guess. One more well, news. Kind of two, but I'll save it till what you're watching for the second one. Um. So James Gunn's making a Suicide Squad movie. Did you know that? I did, I knew that. Did you know that? We haven't have we, talked about it in a while. Though. No, we haven't. But um, they, we, we've talked about it before. We have, yeah. Oh, okay. I thought I'd bring it up again because they cast another guy that we know. Idris Elba. No. Oh. Is he still cast? Or was uh, that a rumor? Um, No, I think he was in it. I thought, right? it, I thought it came out and then it was a rumor. Did anyway, that change? Who did they cast? Peter Capaldi. No kidding. He was the doctor. Mr. Capaldi. In the Doctor Who. What's he going to be? I don't know. They didn't release that. Oh. They didn't release his character or anything. They just said James Gunn cast Peter Capaldi in Suicide Squad. I'm in. Movie. I'm in for a James Gunn anything. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. James Gunn anything. Peter Capaldi was uh, probably my least favorite doctor. Oh, really? Um, yeah. I would say I haven't seen the new doctor. I haven't either. Since so Capaldi. I, I don't even know what her name is. I can't. So I haven't, I haven't caught that. up there. Um, I liked, I definitely liked Capaldi. I mean, he wasn't bad. No. I'm not saying, like, everything Doctor Who does, I enjoy. So he I, was not bad. I think uh, he suffered from um, storylines that weren't as interesting. Yes. Um, a companion that wasn't as interesting. Not even close. Um, but I liked how he played the character. He had a real anger to him to a certain extent. You think so? Yeah, I just I don't think, think it was close to David Tennant anger. See, David Tennant was brilliant because he could he could go from goofy to heavy to Fury. angry. Yes. Quickly. Um and I don't think it's the same type of anger that Peter Capaldi had. I don't He, he did bring a certain uh, gravitas to the character. He's just a different type of actor. He's yeah. more of a theatrical I, I person. I'd venture to say if I need to go back and re see the problem is since uh, Matt Smith, all right, Doctor Who, and we went into the new era with Capaldi and the new ones. Yeah. The problem is these shows come out so irregularly, right? That you it's hard to get on a roll. These if you're gonna go back and watch Doctor Who, which I highly recommend you do, yeah. it's a binge show. Yes, you have you to need binge it to be able to watch it because otherwise it comes out like four issues or four episodes now. Two episodes, at, one episode at Christmas, four episodes, three more years later. And yeah. then, you know, it's just like I agree with crazy. you. It does really hurt the show. Yeah. It really hurts the show because you can't you, get like a, a head of steam going or even like a connection to the to the character, to the story or whatever. Well, like if they have a continuing what I would story. always find with Capaldi, that was the issue for me is <clears throat> you'd go in and you watch like two or three episodes or four episodes, whatever. And then by then you're just really getting into it. And yeah. then it, it was like another year. Yeah. And, and then you like, wouldn't get I don't back even to remember it. what happened in the last episodes. Right. The only thing that helped me at the time was that I would DVR them, you know, so I'd, I wouldn't watch them for like a year. Yeah. And then they came back. But I do feel like that's why I fell out of Doctor Who. Well, is we because, caught up. Well, we caught up and then we had to wait for it. And then I never went back to it. Yeah. And I, you've watched a lot more sin, than I have um recently yeah but and by recently i mean like two years ago it's been a while it's been a minute that's annoying yeah it's such a good show i need to get back into it and this is another thing that we always say like we need to get back into something but there's so much freaking content yeah and there's a couple that i might mention in the what we're watching segment i can't there is there is one new show that you need to desperately be watching okay well, we'll, we'll talk about it in a minute. So what did we do last weekend, Chris? So, guys, um, we're going to talk about our main section of the show is all about our Snarf Talk Road Trip. Road Trip. Volume 2. 
Yeah. Well, I don't even know if it's two, but <laughs> Snarf Talk Road Trip. Yeah. Um, we've been hyping it up for a while now. And we went. We had a bunch of people that were interested in going, and almost all of them dropped out, but we had some very good friends of the show. We did. Come on the Snarf Talk Road Trip with us. The Seed and Tops. Mr. Seed and Top and Mrs. Seed and Top. Yeah. And um, I'm really glad they came, and I think they yeah. had a great time, too. David and Cassie, uh, we've talked about them a lot on the show, and I do it on purpose just to aggravate them and so that it brings up conversation when we're around each other. Uh, but I do believe we have gained some Bristol Renaissance fans. Yeah, Oh, yeah. Because David, immediately as he got there, he was like, I'm all in. I'm sold. I'm in on this. And it's the environment. It's the people you're around. It's the, the atmosphere. atmosphere. Is just It's fantastic. It's very, very, um, shoot, what's the word? Like uh, Immersive? Yes, immersive. You're completely immersed in a world, uh, even though there, it's, there's a ton of people there. You know, a lot of times it's there's a lot of people there, big crowds. But you're so immersed in what you're doing and the area you're in. It just it's tr- great. It, yeah. I like everything about it's great. You see all these little shops. Um, and we we'll, we were gonna have a recap video of that. It's gonna take me a few weeks to get that one together because first of all, there's a lot to edit. There's a lot of going through. And I haven't uploaded any of my videos <laughs> onto anything yet. So. Um, but I mean, first of all, we picked the most perfect day in the world. It was like 70 degrees. It was raining that morning, and then when we got there, it wasn't raining, became sunny, and was like 70. Yeah, it was, it was amazing all day. Um, so we got there super early. We took off early in the morning. Um, it was relatively not, not crowded at all in the morning. No. We got to go around and kind of check stuff out with almost no crowds. Um, if you've never been to the Bristol Renaissance Fair before, um, we can kind of talk about what it is, but... It's um, basically like a gigantic fairgrounds. It's big. I mean, yeah, it's big. It's big. And yeah. you kind of go through, and it's permanent structures, so buildings. It's made to look like the Renaissance era. There's buildings. They're all full of little shops um, selling clothing, uh, costume stuff, um, pipes. jewelry, pipes, tobacco, uh, lots of bars. There's bars all over the place. This kind of brings me to one of my the most interesting aspects of the, the Bristol Renaissance Fair, and one of my favorites is it's a great place for kids, but it's clearly like an adult themed place. Yeah, it's very adult. But it themed. has tons of kid activities, rides, games, very kid friendly. Yeah, great to bring kids, but it is heavily on the drinking side of things. It. Yes. Spirits are a flowing at the Bristol Renaissance Fair. Yeah, there. if you want it to be that way. If you want it to be like that. Um, or you can ignore that. But, but even, it's, even, it's there. It's even prominent. outside of that, it's a very... Uh, um, every single thing, every show, every actor, every person, it's all like innuendo. You know what I'm saying? Oh, my gosh. Like very strong sexual innuendo in everything that's yeah, going on. Yeah, the whole thing is, is a sexual innuendo. <laughs> like if they somebody that was really it. annoying went in there... And decided to just like go me too crazy on the place. <laughs> yeah, it would be a difficult situation. It would be, but uh, I don't think you attract. I don't think you attract that crowd. But I don't know. No, everybody that's there is pretty much there to have a good time. Nobody's being because there's plenty of people getting soused up. Lots of them. a lot of people with their kids. Nobody's nobody's having issues. Everybody's no. pretty relatively happy there. It's very fun. It's very but dispersed out very through open. this world. The city is all these shows. That's the main thing there. There's musicians. Yeah. There's comedy. There's plays. There's uh, we talked about. We we went to see Adam Crack. Adam fire, Crack, the fire whip guy. He's so good. Yeah, and he. Uh, I wish I could crack. A he whip has like multiple him. whips, and then he has one that he lights on fire. He does a little show. He's yeah, the whole thing's on fire. Bottles in half. Cans. It's. A little bit of camp comedy involved. It's it's a good. It, it's very good. We got a lot of video of him. We didn't see a lot of other shows. So the Mud Show I know is really popular. It's a comedy show. I never saw that. Um, yeah, they have the Mud Pit over there. We didn't really go over by there. But mm. it's one of the more popular shows. Yeah, I never saw we that. We got the Mooney guy on the main stage. There's musicians everywhere. We didn't watch yes. a lot of those guys. We also didn't see the Dirk, uh, what is his name, the uh, comedy sword fighting guy. Oh yeah, uh, or the Dirk Swordsman or something, something like that, yeah. or the barely balanced um, uh, acrobats. They're acrobats. 
Yeah. No, we didn't really watch any of those. We just kept walking. Yeah, around, we walked around a lot. Random places. But in the middle of the day, you're randomly walking around, and then there's a parade that comes through. Yes. Of everybody in costume. It's just, it's so much fun. So at the very end, um, before we left, there was a big, um, like, almost like a jam session, kind of. like. Oh, the drums. They do that every night. Yeah, the whole, the drums started playing. This whole big group of people came around. Um, Jerry I, was moshing. I was in. You I was in, in the it, mosh pit, but I was videotaping the whole time. So I had the camera there. I was videotaping all these things. Um, a lot of things were happening in the middle of this thing. But I talked to a furry. Oh um, wow! So there was a blue fox furry. Uh, I didn't get her name, but maybe I did. I don't remember. Um, but she was really into my microphone. But we talked for a really long time about that stuff but then i videotaped her dancing for a while but while that was going on this like raven guy do you remember this guy no oh my gosh i've got videotape of him too that's gonna be on there but this big raven guy he was dressed like a bird but he's also balancing on a ball oh yeah i saw that guy. so he's walking guy around awesome. on a ball and he has wings but then he had these leather he used them as like clappers they look like a fan like the fans that would, you yeah. know, come out and you could fan yourself, <laughs> fan fans, Jerry. <laughs> yes. But they like were Chinese like Chinese fans. They were like leather clappers, and he was like clap. He'd like flip them out and clap them to the beat, while he was on this ball, and he, I liked him. I followed him all over <laughs> with the video camera. He was really neat, and I don't think he worked there. I don't oh, think I'm he, sure he didn't. Yeah, I think he just came. Yeah. And cause, because he wasn't like with the drumming people or anything like that, he was just wandering around on a ball dressed like a raven, clapping these things. <laughs> lots and of it was like that. so amazing. Yeah. There's people walking around. Um, there's lots of people on stilts. There are. Um, that are parts of the shows. I think a lot of those are part of the acrobatic show. There was this weird dude that was on stilts, but his face was dressed up like a. We'd call it like a baby a puppet. Ba- a baby, yeah, like a. But then he had a baby underneath him that was yeah. that was he was running with sticks, the hands and feet, and then in behind that, and then above his actual below his head was made up like a stage. Well, I thought it was like a high chair, or was it a high chair? I thought he was like the so baby was sitting in a high chair. You really couldn't see him at all because there right. was like drapes down in front. And but he was a full man sized face with these little baby that arms and legs that he was running, and he it was so creepy. weird. It was and so creepy. Weird. There and there's lots of weird and creepy stuff there. But I remember that bringing up the conversation that I had said was, do you think like he comes to the show and says, hey, listen, I got, got an idea. I got this idea. <laughs> it's my head on a baby, on stilts. Yeah, dressed like a mannequin with face paint. Or do they like say, "Hey, we have these characters. Who wants to be them?" Yeah, no, I think that's all him, man. That's weird. Yeah, like he, it's like um, it's like clown clothing, like or yeah. a jester type clothing. Would yeah. you say? Yeah, um, with like the red dots on your cheeks. It's all white face. My guess is it must harken really back creepy. to something from that those that era. I guess that he saw somewhere. I don't know, but. You know, a lot of interesting characters walking around, a lot of people in costume, a lot of people in suits of armor. Yeah. So I talked about Wizard World being like you you walk around and there's always something happening. Like in, in the video, if you watch it, uh, I, I'm taking video walking around at one point during during the show. And there's like a Michelangelo guy spinning nunchucks, you yeah. know, and then like uh, the Joker comes up and starts talking to me. But at this show, I just feel like it's on a whole, it's a nother, whole level. nother level, man. Because it really feels like an immersive universe that you're in. You're in the middle of, and it doesn't even have to be the Renaissance. It's not. No, everybody it's, thinks it's the Renaissance. It's not. It's, it's not. everything. I took a picture of a lady that looks like a lamb. It's like a, it's I don't like know if fawn. it's a fawn. Yeah, like a fawn with antlers. And then death was next to her, I think. Yeah. Because he was all black. Oh, yeah. That's a really cool picture, Those, too. That was a cool picture. Um, that'll be in the video. Yeah. And then, so the very first thing we did when we get there um, is we were, well, first of all, we signed up to do the pub crawl. Yes. So that was pretty exciting. Um, they only had three tickets. 
and there's six of us, but um, they let the other three kind of tag along. They just had to buy their own drinks. No big deal. Right. No, that, that actually the really drinks isn't a big included deal in the in the bar crawl are tiny little cups of. We'll talk about those later, but yeah. <laughs> the first thing they do is the, so the the bar crawl, pub crawl, it, people don't understand is extremely R rated. Yes, so uh, it, it, the like whole point, hard R. the whole point of it is like really racy, racy jokes, limericks. Um, the actors that are doing it really like I, some of the things they're doing. I'm going like you have to get in character to be doing this Big because like, they, you don't walk around your normal life acting like this. This is like I'm I'm working there. I mean, I got my game they, face on. I'm in character now. They are very much in character. Yeah, and they're I mean, very good. Every one of the people that are working for Bristol Renaissance Fair, and especially the pub crawl, are very much in character. And um, the only time I saw one of them break character is when we were getting a drink. I was getting a drink during the pub crawl, and the guy walks up next to me, and he said, man, this just started, and my voice is, like, blown out. <laughs> because he was just yelling. You know, they yell the whole time. They yeah. have to be so loud because the crowd is relatively, like, the ambient noise of the place is just very high. Yeah, and we did a, the bar crawl at, like, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. It was a lot very of people, crowded. A lot of people around. And, um, yeah, they are very much in character and very professional about it, even though it's a ridiculous, like, w- what they're saying is ridiculous and what they're doing is ridiculous. You still have to have some level of professionalism to do that. It might, it might go above above an R rating. A lot of it. I agree. It's it's like super hard. R. The first thing they do is they take our IDs. The girl takes our IDs and shoves them down into her cleavage. All three of our IDs, and she goes, "Okay, you got to pull them out." But if you don't get your own, then you had to do something. I can't remember what it was. Yeah, you had to put it back or put I it. I don't remember what it, it just was. Just kind of sets the tone. But then a lot of tipping into boobs. Oh, but beyond that, it was like we, you get a pin when you go on the, um, the bar crawl, yeah. like it's a bar crawl pin that they have made, uh, each year by a, a, a pewter, like a pewter smith makes yeah, it. a pewter craftsman or whatever you'd call it, but it's all handmade stuff. That's a really cool thing about the Bristol Renaissance Fair is that all of these little, uh, vendors, they're like vendors basically that come into the fair, but all these places are like handmade Right. things that you're really only going going to get there. It might be on a little bit of an upcharge, but you're not going to find this type of stuff anywhere else. And not that expensive. I mean, <clears throat> so some of the vendors, you know, there's the guy that has like the handmade leather journals or bags. Well, that's what I was going to say is like you can go to Walmart or to like an Office Max and get a journal that might have a leather cover for $12. Here, it's going to be probably 25 or 30 but it's going to be legitimate leather that's been crafted and some of them are carved yeah there's a like a design on the front but then the paper is also handmade paper right and that is something that you're never going to find in a store in flasks or there's guys there blowing glass there's guys there yeah smithing metal is that what the yeah smithing metal um making real swords not it's it's amazing what they do there and those people are craftsmen they're and that's why they go to those places because this is basically the only place you can sell them. Um, but uh, where were we going with that? Uh, I don't know. We were talking about the bar crawl, <laughs> the pewter okay. pin. Okay, from the pewter pin, she has this little sack that all the pins are in. In order to even get one of those, it's a very racy discussion about it, a woman's anatomy <laughs> and how you were to enter it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and uh, it was it was. You could do uh, it's uncomfortable at high times. school, college, something or other. Four kids was one of them. It was like high high school, college, and each one of them had divorced. They're yeah, di- divorce. Divorce. Each one of them had their own little uh, shtick to it. It was it was funny. It's hilarious, but I mean, it's just awkward at the time, <laughs> yeah. you know. And I immediately choose the wrong one, <laughs> but uh, it's it's a it gets very... less and less awkward the more you drink turns out of course like isn't that the way it always goes? they had a couple different drinks um so you could get beer of course they give you it's a pretty little cup but you get beer you can get honey mead i didn't even know you could get beer yeah they just always had the mead up front so that's what i got that's whatever it was getting because it's higher alcohol content i didn't even think about that yeah. well, i didn't said it that's what they told me. they're like I know. you should get the mead because it's like double the alcohol because they are small cups you know they are but i should have got the beer 
Well, anyway, <laughs> they got blueberry mead. If you got the blueberry and the honey mixed together, it was blue balls. Blue balls, yep. And then there was the pterodactyl, which, which was, was all of them. Yeah, plus something else. All of it mixed together. I don't know what it was, but then with that drink, you also had to make a you pterodactyl. Had to perform a pterodactyl. Oh, yeah, nice. I've got a video of the bartender, and it'll be in our video. I hope. <laughs> It, you're the cutting guy, so yeah, I don't okay. know. You're the editor. But I have a video of him, and he says, what would you like? It's just a video of him. He says, what would you like? I said, I'll have the pterodactyl. He'll say, okay, have at it. And then you just hear me in the background of this. <laughs> it's the most ridiculous thing. It needs to be in there. And he told you it was shit, right? I think so. Yeah. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> So you gotta wander pub to pub. You go stand out kind of in a circle. There, you play some games, like throw the ring on the phallic. Yes, phallus. Phallus. I think it's phallus. Phallus. I got it on there. I got a free drink. I did too. Yeah, we were in the winner circle. We were in the wiener circle. Wiener circle. Yeah, that that was what it was called. I didn't want to be the guy that missed. Because luckily, so everybody in front of me had made it. There was like six people in front of me. That all made it in a row. And I was like, I can't be the guy that misses. So I did end up making it on there. Triumphant. Luckily. And then the the one person after me missed. And then there was like three or four people after me that missed. I was like, all right. Now I know. (laughs) I did something. I achieved something here. I don't know how you could miss because they like made it make it down there. Anyway, it's a lot of fun. And... It's so much fun. There's people so many things to do. People have a certain idea, and a lot of people that I talk to about going to this in the first place that wouldn't necessarily think that they would be into this, people, you really need to stop. Yeah. You just need to open yourself up for new, fun experiences outside of your comfort zone. Yes. And this is, and it, it's, it's not, not necessarily not, uncomfortable. Right. I mean, a lot of people are dressed up strangely, um, but it's, I, I wouldn't say that it's any different than going to a regular fair to an extent. So people are dressed up in a certain way, but you don't have to be right. And you make it whatever you want. And I don't want you to think, I don't want anybody to think that you have to go there to drink. Like it's not something that you, you, it's not something that you, you have to drink to have fun. That is not even close to being true. If you want to, you can drink and it is very, um, like alcohol forward for adults. But you can go there and do so many different things oh, without yeah. drinking whatsoever. They have huge like climbing walls. You can ride horses. There's, There's tons a of petting games. zoo. There's rides for kids. There's Ar- archery, axe throwing, dagger throwing. The j- the joust at the end is really fun. So that I, so we'll get into a little more of that. The first thing we did after we did that uh, signed up for the bar crawls, we went over. There was nobody there yet. So we were just walking along, and they have this area where you can uh, sword fight. Oh, oh, I forgot all about this. It's like we, fencing sword fighting. Chris and I fought each we, other. We, we squared off. We did. We got after it. and In a duel to the death. Right, and I died. You did. I'm sorry. And you go for five rounds. I mean, seriously, they put all the gear on you. They're real swords. Yeah, it's a real it's a real fencing. A fencing sword. Uh, what are those called? I don't uh, think they're called a sword. I think they're, they're called... Uh, Oh, I should know this. I should know these type of weird pointy things. stick. It, yeah, I gotta look. <laughs> but it up. you put now the now whole robe on, the welding gloves, the metal knight helmet, like an actual helmet, real which thing. I was not expecting. It's hot in there, man. Well, it turns out they didn't take in consideration my glasses kind of stick out a little yeah. bit, and so she she put the helmet on and it's like pushing on my glasses. What I was worried about is that there's a wire. Oh, it'd break it. That my lens was would pop out. Oh yeah. That's what I was worried about at first. And then she put it on and it wasn't doing anything. So I was fine. Then we get out in the arena and I start breathing and they start fogging up up. worse and worse. And I was like, I'm not going to be able to see literally anything, but they kind of quit. I, I like tilted my head down a little bit and it quit fogging up. So I could see just fine. I'm not using that as an excuse. Okay, by any means. Is a, Cause you a little bit of a cop out there. No, it's not. I, I was worried at first that it was going to completely like blind my vision, <laughs> but it ended up not being the case. So the, you do a little training, you get dressed up and how it works is you square off in the arena. Um, and, um, you, they put balloons on your head. 
So they only yeah. really let you strike a certain way. It's like you have to down. come. They that I shouldn't have listened to that. It's kind of dumb because I don't think they would have cared if you did anything else. I know, and the it is a disadvantage to me being shorter than you when you're trying to hit on the top of someone's head. Yeah, that's all I'm going to say. So when you're coming down, yeah, here we go. I knew this it's was a four gonna four foot long sword. I mean, but to be honest, if you're coming straight down to hit on top of someone's head. If I'm eight inches shorter than you, you're not eight inches. Shorter you than me. are literally a giant, and I am just above midget class. You can't use that word. Yes, I can. That is a small people. Is little, that the word? Little people. Well, short people got. Short people got. <laughs> you know, uh, we that was a previous episode. You call back. To. So anyway, we, we square off in the arena um, about the first two rounds. And it, this it's rather unwieldy with all the equipment. It's very hot in there. Uh, the first two rounds, we simultaneously killed each other, right? We did. We did that a lot. So somewhere probably around the third round, Jerry decides to get a little more aggressive with it. I did. And he starts basically... Attacking he just holds you. up... No, you didn't attack. You held oh, up your guard. You. you just held up your guard, but you didn't attack. Right. But I would be attacking you. Mm-hmm. But the whole time that I'm wasting energy attacking you as you're just holding on, you're like coming at me like a squirrel monkey. <laughs> Spider monkey. Spider monkey. Yeah. <laughs> I call it a squirrel monkey. That's fine. You can. So he's coming at me. So there's a guy I work with that call, has always called me squirrel. But when you're attacking, you're kind of shuffling your feet. So if you're walking forward, I'm kind of constantly shuffling backwards. Right. So you kind of get me on the back a little bit, and then but then we kill each other. So we did that for like three rounds. So it was, I think it was uh, three to three. You killed yourself once. I did and, kill myself and they once. Didn't they count didn't count it. that. Yeah. And I yelled at the guy and I said, if we were actually in a sword fight and a guy stabbed himself in the eye, would that not count? <laughs> and he said, okay, next round. <laughs> I was like, really? He's like, dude, come on. Yeah. Well, anyway. Well, I was taking it seriously. So, and then one time, um, which is pretty hilarious, I, I... Lost my footing and totally took a dive. He fell. Yeah. He fell down. Pretty hard. Real hard. <laughs> but Because I, of my attack. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> Not really. You were coming at me so fast it kinda of, I was stepping back and I stepped over but my But when feet. I watched when I watched the video back, I didn't it didn't no, look no, it did not look like I was coming at you very fast. So I think we were tied uh four all, right? Yes. We were tied yeah. four all in going into the final round and I decided to get a little more aggressive with it. And I did the marching forward. You did. The whole idea I had was to hold, because I, I was blocking the whole time. Which was you kept infuriating. Attacking. Yeah, I'm sure. It was infuriating because you wouldn't swing. You would nope. just sit there and block the entire time. And I'm like, well, what can I do? I'm not going to stand up there and block, so we're both just sitting there blocking. The problem is, is like I can't attack when you can poke at a lower thing. You know, like something lower than you, you could just poke it. Okay. That's a lot easier to do than me hit something up high. So I held up a guard on purpose to hope that your sword, well, actually what it's called is a... Uh, a foil. No, an epi. Epi. Okay. It's E-P-E-E. But the the first E has a little mark on top. Epi. And the second E has a mark on top. <laughs> okay. I don't know how to say that. Epe. 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 Um, foil. Yeah. Fencing foil. It's a foil. Is that what you said? Yeah. Oh. Foil, epe, and saber. Okay. Anyway. So I was, I, I was holding it up to try to push yours to the side so mine could come straight down. Like I was hoping to like yeah. angle it to the side and come straight down on your head. I did that like once successfully once or twice successfully after that the like the last round i was like okay i'm gonna really get it and i was gonna like try to push like actually push you to the side but as soon as i did that it like whoosh, <laughs> yeah it's like well that failed that was it that completely so i was a victorious champion right so chris is as of right now the ultimate champion of fencing we'll see. At, in the snarf talk world yeah. snarf talk world we uh, shot some cannons. Until next year. Some limp cannons. Don't even get me started. I paid money 
for this cannon where you pull the string back and it's spring loaded. It's spring loaded, but they stretch their springs. They stretch the springs. They pulled the springs out. They yeah. stretch. The, you don't stretch a spring. No, you can't stretch a spring. You know what really stretches my spring? <laughs> stretch springs. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. It's getting better. Number one. We didn't throw any axes, which we did in the past. It's a lot of fun. We did some archery before. I didn't. I've never thrown an axe. I have. And they also have knife throwing. Yeah, knife throwing. I've done that too in the past. I don't know why we didn't do more of that stuff. Because we were kind of intoxicated. That's probably why. (sighs) Yeah. But we did go um, all through the day. They have joust. Actually, just twice. So they have the main joust. Yeah. Then they have the royal falconer comes out. And then they do something else. We went to the last joust, which is the joust to the death. Right. And And that guy uh, literally died. Yeah, he did. They, they legitimately kill a man. Yeah. And it was fun. It was a great time. I mean, uh, the Changes jousting you. is real. It's like uh, medieval times. It is. So so the first joust of the day, I actually think maybe is a little more interesting because they do more of the games. like they, Do they? Where they got to joust and get the, the rings on yeah, the, the ring. and stuff like that. Um, they do some more of that. The last joust of the death is shorter. So they just have like a joust. They still like the last... Because in the in the one earlier, there's like four or six nights. There's a bunch of them. Yes, and that's what we did. Uh, yes, that's what we did in last years time. previous. And it's longer, and it's a little more. I don't know. It's a little funner. This but is just to find it's the just, champion. This, the, yeah, it's the final jou- joust, and there's a sword fight, and they kill each other, and it's fun. Yeah, it's very fun. We have video of it. Again, they walk all around this. selling beef jerky. Get your meat. Yeah. Get your meat. Yes. I have video of that as well. Uh, um, we took a lot of video. We did take a lot and of video. It took me a lot of sorting through. Yeah, but I'm proud of us. Yeah. Because at first you made fun of me and said that I was self-conscious You're of video. You were being bashful. I wasn't. It's just that I was there and I didn't feel like getting it all out because you were already videotaping. Yeah. And then I realized, wait a minute. The videotaping is kind of annoying because it's like hard to necessarily just enjoy yourself. And you're the guy. You're the guy that everybody looks at. It's like, look at this. Look at this jagger. He's got a big microphone on top of his camera. Who does he think he is? <laughs> what they don't know is that we have a wildly successful YouTube channel and podcast that they need to be a part of. Yeah. And this is how it happened. There were some moments when we were doing some like interview segments or like introductions. And people were kind of gathering around. They're like, what are they doing? They're recording for something. Yeah. When we did it at the opening yeah, yeah. Uh, area coming in. Um, it's fun. They have this great thing for kids. Um, it's a jousting and you go all the way up on this tower and they have these two like not wooden, uh, wooden, they're wooden horses, horses that you sit on and you get a joust and they got wooden joust things about halfway down. And this is a zip line and you sit on it and they let you down and you zip down and you joust and you hit the right. little spinny thing. I mean, that's awesome. That's all awesome. of the rides, which there's, I don't know, there's probably a good 10 carnival type rides, but they're all human powered. Human powered and like man made wooden structures. Yeah. There's that one that's like a barrel that they they use twist ropes. up and ropes and they just get it spinning. It's like a barrel ride. There's one that's like um, it's like you sit on it and it twists around a pole. Yes, and they twist you all the way up there and they just let it's just gravity powered. It's like perpetual motion yeah. where it just it spins itself up and spins you down yeah. and then spins itself up. This is genius stuff. Yeah, they have zip lining. They have cl- big rock climbing walls. Um, it's just a great place. I, I really think there's no way to go there and not enjoy yourself. I completely agree, especially especially with a group of people um, that you are friends with. It's just such a good time. and It might get a little hard to manage with even a bigger group. I don't even know be. how you I guess it navigate, could be, you but... Know? It was very crowded. I think we did very well at, and we kind of made fun of ourselves in the middle of it because we would walk like, you know, 200 feet and then we'd stop yeah. and gather ourselves and stand in a circle and talk a little bit. I wouldn't mind doing a little more like shopping and looking around in the shops. We could have. be cool. We did go to a Springs and Things uh, steampunk shop. We did. Which actually had a lot of cool stuff in it. And I, what I liked about it is that I feel like they pulled from other vendors and took the leather from yeah. like the leather shop and the paper from the journal books and stuff and brought it all into one area mm-hmm. into that little steampunk area and made basically costume features. 
Yeah, that's what they were. It's like costume features to be like if you were. There's a lot of people that go to this clearly that are just really into costumes, and that's what they're doing is going there and, and shopping for features for their costumes. Yeah, and the costumes here are at a level above the cosplay at uh, Wizard World. It's this is like professional cosplayers. Yeah, it really is. It's it's almost like their livelihood. And the reason I say that is because when we were doing the fencing part. Um, those people, that is part of their livelihood. And they were talking about, uh, their equipment and some of the helmets and stuff. And one of the guys said, he's like, boy, in the off season, we really need to do some maintenance on this helmet. Yeah. And that's what made me realize like, man, this is like what these people do. Right. This is, this is their life. And it's, it's so far beyond what we do around here, or what you ever see that you don't think of that. You know, I don't think about maintenancing a medieval helmet, <laughs> right. you know, but they do like, that's their life. Yeah. And the people that are walking around there in costume and doing what they do, that is, that's their thing. That's what they travel around and go to these things. And, and I can super probably appreciate are there every that. weekend. And the other thing is like a lot of these shops, they'll just go to the next fair. So there's yeah. like one in Texas, there's one in California, they're, oh, they're all over and they just do this all year long. I guess I didn't realize that. Yeah. But this one's one of the biggest, right? This is the biggest, yeah. It is the biggest. Yeah. It's so awesome. So it, it was. we had a really great time. Uh, I know David, was. he's really into food. Yeah, oh, and 100%. So he, the fir- right when he got there, he's like, I just need to know, like, is this like garbage they- fair food or is, there, is this like actual food? Yeah, do they take it seriously? Here's what sold them. Okay, the diversity of names yeah. in in the different restaurants and food that was there. But what really sold them is we were walking up to, um, Adam crack, the, the fire whip guy, you and Marley. And I think, uh, Cassie were already up there. I think it was me, Amy and David were walking up behind you guys. And a lady walked out just out of nowhere really. And had, um, like a, it was like a a fried fried cheese. cheese is what it was. But, you could easily tell it was handmade. It was made that day. It wasn't something bagged that had been frozen right. and fried and given to you. And then there was three different types of sauces on the plate, and they were just walking around with it, letting you try it. And after that, he was like, I'm in. Yeah. This is it. This is where I need to be. Yeah. <laughs> and, and they do. They do have a diversity of food. They have like uh, beef ribs in one spot. They get tur- got turkey legs, of course, but they have... Um, artichoke um, things that you get. They get vegetable tempura. Yeah. Which is actually pretty good. That was really good. It needed to be a little more salted. A lot of fried mushrooms and cheese and stuff like that. So it is kind of fair foodie. And you will notice when you look at some of the restaurants that they have like three different store fronts yeah. selling three different things. But behind it is like one kitchen type thing yep. that all the food's actually coming out of. Right. But and that's just to be like efficient right basically but i was disappointed in what i got personally just because we were trying to eat quickly to to keep moving yeah keep doing things and lines for food are very long i mean when you try to eat lunch at noon yeah but they didn't get any shorter all day long no they really people really go there to eat i mean there's a lot of people go there to eat there's tons of food i mean everywhere you go there's like and by the end of the night Forget it if you're trying to get any food. Yeah, you're not going to do it. Anywhere. You can't. Ice cream. They got a lot of ice cream places. Forget it. You Did can't we eat. eat dinner? No, because we never ate dinner. there was no way the lines were so long. Yeah. I did get a portobello mushroom sandwich. Oh, you did? How was that? Um, pretty good. I told Amy she needed to Marley had like a brat with uh, onions and stuff. It was, it was pretty good. So I'm the one that didn't eat. <laughs> Correct. Okay. All right. That makes sense. Um, I wish I would have made better food choices. I got fish and chips. They weren't great. Yeah. Like I said, for lunch, I did not make good choices. Uh, there was other options I should have got. I got the more fair, like actual fair foodie type stuff. Right. And it was not that great. Anyway. So Snarf Talk Road Trip, I think, was a big success. Everybody had a great time. If you didn't go... Man, it sucks to be you. Well, there's always next year. There's always next year, though. But it doesn't open until, like, July. And I don't know if we're ever going to get another 70-degree day. Holy Unbelievable. God. Usually it's 
unbearably hot when you're at the Renaissance Fair. Yeah, the 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 last time we went, it was warm. Yeah, really warm. And there's Labor lots of Day. shade, which is nice, but still. The hot. big problem is like we've went on Labor Day weekend, and Labor Day weekend is even though it's a long weekend, it's hard to get. It's probably the busiest weekend there too. People are always doing something then, but. Yeah, if you ever get a chance and we're going again, we need to we need to tag along. Yeah. So anyway, that's uh that's the Snarf Talk Road Trip. Yeah. I've got uh another news thing that I wanted to bring up okay. real quick. Uh so back to our roots here with uh comic books. This fly is yeah, driving it's all me over crazy. You. You're getting attacked. I don't know if you can see that in the Vidya. The what? The Vidya? Vidya Vidya? Vidya. All right, whatever that is, is that Icelandic? Video, Vidya. You know okay. what I mean? Say Vidya. No, anyway. that's like slides. Like slides. don't act <laughs> like that's something that people have said. No, I've forever. been saying it for years. Hmm. Okay. Someday I'll get it to catch up. So there's a website called Comicsology, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And you can get digital comics on there. I Amazon. Need to cancel my membership because I do too. I never look at it, but Comicsology is owned by Amazon now, but uh, they are big in the digital comic world and. Um, all of the comic book uh, companies put their comics on there. But Comixology is creating their own original content now. And in the month of September, they are having brand new books, like original debut releases every single week. Wow. Of their own content. That's crazy. From their own creators. And I think that's pretty interesting. Do you think that it's creator own work? Um, it says it is, yes. Okay. In the article, it is creator-owned work through Comixology. Boy, it seems like a really big opportunity for us. Um, it could be. Yeah. I mean, really, it could be if you capitalize on it now. Yeah. You know. Uh, but they're having a, t- a new title come out every single week. There was There's four of them. Uh, four or five of them. But... Uh, it, it looks really interesting to me that they're doing this because it's nothing that they've done before. They haven't ever released their own original content before this. If they have, it's very small. But now they're making a statement saying, we are going to create comic books. We have our own creators, and this is what we're going to do. And it seems pretty neat. They have uh, one called uh, Breaklands. It's a five-issue comic book series set 150 years into an apocalyptic future. Um, so that's, you know, we've we've heard of an apocalypse before. I love post-apocalyptic stuff. It's my yeah. favorite stuff. And then there's a this one kind of sounds interesting to me. Um, there's another five issue series coming out on September 11th called Field Tripping, and it's a story about a teacher who possesses an interdimensional school bus and gets stranded with her students on a world that's not theirs. So magic school bus. Yes, it's the magic school bus, but it's like a dark comedy. I like it. Um, that one sounded pretty cool. It uh, includes... Sounds all... rife for a TV show. For sure. And then on September 18th, they have issue number one of Black Ghost, co-written by Alex Segura. Oh, he's I know a, him. Yeah, he's a novelist, but he also writes comic books. Uh Black Ghost follows journalist Laura Dominguez as she attempts to solve the mystery of the Black Ghost's identity. That sounds neat. And then there's Quarter Killer. Um, let's see. It's uh, an ex-corporate computer hacker who, who offers their services to those willing to pay in quarters an untraceable form of payment. Quarter Killer is co-written by Vita Ayala. Yeah. I don't know who that is. Um, and then that's it. Cool. But the black ghost is a cyberpunk mystery. Okay. I like that cyberpunk. Sounds, yeah. Do you need a comiXology subscription to read these? Uh, probably it says right? it in the beginning. Yeah. It's for, but it's also Amazon prime. Oh, okay. So it's Amazon prime members through prime reading, Kindle unlimited and comiXology unlimited. Okay. So it's multiple ways you could get it. Yeah. I because think. since Comixology is owned by Amazon, you can get it basically if you're a Prime member. Cool. Cool, so, cool. So, yeah. Jerry, um, let's talk about Batman Hush. Okay. You haven't watched it yet? No, I didn't. This I is didn't gonna be, watch let's, it. Is this That's gonna be fine. Like we an, can still no, talk about it. I've read on, the comic book. An ongoing 
thing where you're just never going to watch it. Do you want it to be? <laughs> no, I want you to watch it. Oh, okh. Okay. We can't no. talk about or have a review for Hush. This is two weeks straight. Three for- weeks straight. I forgot about it actually. Oh my gosh, Jerry. I forgot about it until last night, and I still didn't watch it. All right. I'm, well, I got some stuff I've been watching, but what have you been watching, most importantly? So, I only watched one thing. Okay. Uh, that's anything new. Um, and it, uh, this also kind of ties into the news. You all right? It's fly. Oh my gosh. I need a spider to catch that fly. So, no joke, we just ordered uh, fly swatters, like, two days ago on Amazon. Because we've had so many flies in the house yeah. and they've been driving us nuts. And the boys destroyed all of our fly swatters. So Amy just bought fly swatters. And I got an email confir- confirmation when I was at work. And I immediately texted her and I was like, yes, fly <laughs> swatters. Because flies have been terrible. Okay. What I've been watching. The new Dave Chappelle comedy special. Oh, and we can talk about it because I have also watched it. So it came out. Yeah. And I think it's very good. Yeah, it's it, lighting the world on fire right now as far as it, criticism. It is. He's getting I'm a lot of criticism about it. Not surprised at all. It was very edgy. So it is very edgy, and he's very abrupt and very like upfront about what's going on in the world and what he thinks is dumb. And he's an edgy comic to begin with. Well, here's the thing. So there was an article that came out that was labeled. This is the label of the article. It says, Triggered America... Chappelle is just, it says triggered America. Chappelle is just what the doctor ordered. Yeah, I agree. And he as yes, I agree. And he's got a great way of addressing things comedically to where you take it seriously, but don't take it seriously because he's talking about the subject seriously, but it's funny because of how ridiculous most of the topics that he's talking about are in reality. You know, when you put it in a, like you bring it off its pedestal and say, listen, this is what you sound like. Right. It's funny. And it says like in the article, it says he hasn't changed. America has become extremely sensitive. Yeah. And I completely agree with that. Definitely. I mean, that's for sure. Because if you watch anything from the Chappelle show, very edgy. early 2000s, yeah. very edgy and very upfront on certain topics, like on like racism Race mostly but yeah. yeah but all of that stuff is very forefront everybody thought it was hilarious nobody ever talked about it i think the issue in this one is that people are having is he turned his focus from it's okay it, it was always okay for him to be edgy about racism yeah okay but in this one he turns his focus to other matters like you know uh feminism and yeah. transgender stuff and he talks about a lot of these types of things, and all of a sudden, it's not okay for him to talk about that stuff anymore. Right. Which is ridiculous. You know what I mean? Oh, okay. So, it's okay for him to be edgy and talk about racism because he's black. Right. But the second he steps out of that and does the same thing on another topic, triggered. Watch out. You yes. know what I mean? It is completely like that. And he can and share. He talks about it in the special. That's what's the thing about all the outrage. I'm like... He talks about the outrage oh, in the special. He and direct, he, he directly addresses that. And he's going to get that. the outrage, and he does not care. He immediately addresses what people are going to say about what he's saying. Right. He doesn't care, and he he thinks it's funny. Yeah. And everybody in the audience thought it was funny, and me watching it, I thought it was funny. I, I, I just don't understand where the outrage comes from because he's a comic. And he I, is a stand-up comedian. And nothing is actually that super edgy in it, I don't think. But as far as his... So about a year ago or two years ago, he had like back-to-back specials on yeah. Netflix, right? Um, what was this one on? Was it on Amazon? The newest one? Yeah. No, Netflix. There was some other big stand-up comic that just came out on Amazon. Jim Gaffigan. Oh, Jim Gaffigan. I watched that one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but this one... And I liked those last ones. Oh, yeah. Jim Gaffigan's was really good. Well, I mean, his last two specials oh, that were on okay. Netflix, I yeah. liked. This one, I felt like, was on a whole different level. I felt like it was funnier, but also, like, he just seemed less um, depressed. I don't know. Like, he just it felt more like old Chappelle. Yeah. I just, uh, I've been a, I'm a huge fan of him as a stand-up comic. Obviously, everybody loves the Chappelle show, but I really honestly believe, like, as a stand-up comic... 
he is the top. I mean, he's at the top. I agree. Of all time. I agree. Like he just, I'm not saying he's the best of all time. I'm saying he's in the conversation. He's in the top 10. Especially know. right now. And right now is even better, but just the, it, it he just, everything works. So it here's, clicks with him. here's one of the things he talked about. And you know, this is not me condoning anything. This is just me saying what he said. Right. And he talked about, um, some uh, like famous people that have committed suicide. And he said like all of like these people are making millions and millions of dollars and have everything that they could ever want and end up committing suicide and going because they just go crazy basically because of everything that they have. He said, and then there's another guy that he knows and he's known him since he was a kid, got married really young, um, had a, a wife and had some kids and then ended up getting divorced. And he, he was starting this big business or he was a lawyer. He went to school, was a lawyer, was making a ton of money, ended up getting divorced and she took everything from him. And he met back up with this guy and he was working at Foot Locker and he's like, he's dressed up in the referee uniform and he walks in talking to him and they talk like everything was cool. And he said, and you know what? He's like, that guy lost everything. He's working at Foot Locker. He's like, that guy never once thought about killing himself. <laughs> right. He's like, do you, do, you, do you get what I'm saying? He's like, I even thought about like saying to him, yeah, you know, you ever thought about, <laughs> you know. And he's like, no, of course he didn't. He said, because he's a normal human being. And he had everything that he wanted. He was doing anything he wanted. He's like, he was even living with his parents again. He's like, he was a hugely successful lawyer but then got everything stripped away from him. He's like, and he was fine. He's like, but these people in like celebrity status, that get all this money and do all these things. He's like, just go off the wall. He's like, and we live in this little world that's encompassed by our money. He's like, and they can't handle it when they get into the real world and things change. And I think that's a really good point because I feel like the celebrity status puts them in this dome of, non-reality yeah and if they get any touch of what the rest of the world is doing they just can't handle it yeah and that's he was making that point because of what he had done like earlier in his career when he just kind of went off the map yeah and everybody was saying you're crazy you're insane like why are you doing that no he wasn't crazy or insane he saw like what bad was coming of what he was doing and what he had and he decided to say, like, hey, wait a minute, I'm not gonna do that. Right. Like, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to step back from this a little bit. And everybody thought it was weird. But yeah. really he's saving his own sanity. And not only that, but like so he keeps that show up for the next two years and just fizzles it out. Right. What and do then you he's get? done. And yeah. now and he's the most successful stand up comedian in the world right now. Absolutely. And, and he took the criticism on that. Just like whatever, you can call me whatever you want, but I'm going to do my own thing. Oh, here. Somebody said, like he said in other specials or in other interviews, he's like, you gave up a hundred million dollar contract or something like that with comedy central at the time or something ridiculous amount of money. he's just like, think about it though. I mean, he's probably making a hundred million dollars a year now. Right. You know what but, I mean? th- but also think about that. Like if you were in that position, what decision would you make? I don't, I mean, first of all, there's a certain amount of money where it just doesn't, you don't need anymore. You know what I mean? Tell that to a professional athlete. Well, I mean, they're not living regular lifestyles. I mean, I feel neither, like okay, neither are these people that are making. But they could be. There are some ones that are out there. There could be guy a guy out there in Hollywood, like an actor or something. He's making twenty million dollars. Say, that's just living a normal life. He's like, well, I need a hundred. I need a million a year, and man, I just got to like. I don't need to buy a private island. You know right. what I mean? <laughs> I know, <laughs> I but there's a, a normal life. There's something that changes in most people yeah. when you're getting that amount of money, you live a certain way and you kind of crest and you're like, wait a minute, like I can't live this certain way anymore. I need more of that. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's a certain type of person that drives towards that lifestyle in the first yeah. place. Yeah. And I think that probably plays an aspect of it too. And yeah. Whatever. I mean, there's a lot that goes into it, but that's a hard decision though. When somebody says, I'm going to give you a hundred million dollars to keep doing what you've already been doing. Yeah. And then you can, 
Could you back away from that and say no? Could you continue do to do that thing that you're doing though at that high level? I think he could have, but I agree with you that the show itself would have fizzled out because I mean, it there would are, become monotonous. There's other there's other reasons why he quit that show. I mean, he sure. didn't like the direction of the people that were taking what he was his message and and construing it differently yeah. than what he's And the problem with that too is that um, production and the company that owns you. Yeah. Well, that's the know. hard part about it too. I mean, he wasn't alone in that. He had a partner, Neil yep. Brennan, who's also popular, but not on that level. Right. He was also probably up for that amount of money. Yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes. <laughs> that's what I mean. It just, that's a very hard decision like, to make. And say I, res- for example, we had some success at doing what we're doing. We do. And let okay. But let's, let's put it in scale. Say like, um, we were making a million dollars a year. We had a very successful YouTube channel and podcast, whatever. And um, somebody came to us and was like, okay, we're going to give you this development deal. We're going to give you a million uh, guaranteed $2 million. All right. And one of us just said, nah, that's okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. Would you be upset if I did that? Right now? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right now, yes. If we were already making two million a year doing what we were doing, and somebody offered us the same amount of money to do that, you'd be less so upset. Yeah, yeah right. No, I I'm would saying be much less upset because I'm already making that money. But if but we if were making two million dollars a year, I mean, guys, we understand this is ridiculous. We're not saying this. Yeah, is gonna happen. no. <laughs> but if we were making two million dollars a year doing this or we're doing whatever we're doing, um, what would change? Would we move? No. Would I, we move out west? No, I would not. What if you're making $10 million a year? I know I know for a fact that there's no way we I would move. What about, I mean, the industries out there? What if we got a... We uh, would have to commute. What if we put which out a Which wouldn't book? be an issue, which wouldn't be an issue for us. I mean... I would, I would not be working a full-time job no, anymore. No, and neither um, would I, but... And Amy probably wouldn't be, so... It would take less stress out of my life at that for that. Obviously, we would gain more work with what we were doing, but no, I, I don't think I would ever move. No, I don't think I would either. And, and there's plenty of people who don't, by the way, who don't live in Hollywood that work in Hollywood. Yeah. Um, we could afford enough to maybe have a little condo there. Exactly. That That's could... why I'm saying like we could commute back and forth to that when we needed to. What I'm saying is like if somebody offered us a huge amount of money at this point when you're not making that money and you said no, or if I said no, let's say. It'd be a problem. It would be a problem. <laughs> okay, right. so say we came out with a comic book, whatever, mild success, but some some company like Amazon's like, hey, we're we're gonna make that show. Yeah. We're gonna buy the rights, we're gonna give you ten million dollars, you're gonna executive produce, you're gonna but here's a stipulation, you need to move out here. To make that happen. And for that time, we could do it. Yeah, I agree. I mean, they already give you the money. You could do it at the time. Go home on the weekends. Yeah. I mean, what's a $400 flight when they're giving you $20 million? A glimpse into our future. <laughs> right. No, the the point of that is, is like, you're being We should probably offered. finish our comic first. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, that should be. That should happen. You're being offered a certain amount of money to do something and you're backing away from that um, for your own welfare, like your own personal good, like your mental health, physical health, whatever. I think that is a very stand up thing to do and a very like strong, like a mentally strong thing to do. Yeah, I agree. In his mindset. But again, he was already a millionaire. Yeah. And he did kind of a little bit go a little off the rail. Some of those stand-up specials were a little off the rail. Some of those were they? Last ones. See, I don't, rem- I don't know any of them. But uh, no. Th- anyway, long story short, his new one is a must-see. I mean, I think it's really good. It is very, very. And good. And I'm a, I'm a fan of stand-up comedy. I know, I understand some people aren't, but it's, it's, it's a good watch. He also takes a very big stand on the whole Michael Jackson thing. Oh yeah, yeah. And that's causing some drama too. Because... Actually, that was probably one of the funniest parts. I thought. <laughs> I thought so too. Yeah. But and I don't want to ruin it, but he's... You kind of... You don't... It's the thing that everybody thinks but doesn't want to say. 
And he said it, and that that actually like got me when he when he said, "Well, but, but, did he?" And also, like, do I really care? <laughs> yes, that's the thing, because he's like he's like, but Michael Jackson I mean, made that music, <laughs> and <laughs> it's very funny. You should watch it because I don't want to ruin it for you. But that part got me. But that's something that's being lost nowadays, which I worry about, right? So being able to separate things that people do with the kind of people that they are and then having to be like, this person did this one thing 10 years ago. They said this one thing. Now, some things obviously are terrible, but yeah. say they said this one thing 10 years ago. So right. they're done forever and everything they've ever done is garbage and throw it all away. That's called what that's called is cancel culture. Yeah. And I don't that's like what it's that. called right I now. I don't like that. Like, I don't like the fact that, yeah, I get it. Bill Cosby, terrible human being. Yes. But how much do you really care? Well, and does it degrade the show? We talked about it in the whole sitcom show. Yeah. Like, we brought up the Cosbys. We love that show. And we said that will never be played again in syndication or on TV ever again because of what happened. Yeah. Like, but there's the, no way a a, a a a channel is going to But no part of me, up. no part of me ever... If the Cosby show came on, maybe this is controversial to say, but no part of me would ever go like, oh, I'm not going to watch that because that guy's a piece of shit. Like, no, because I can separate the fact that that show exists. The show that hundreds of people worked on. You know, I can separate the the fact that that exists from a person that was involved in it. That's a terrible person, apparently. And I agree with you, but how would that stand out to you if it was like a serial killer? I I don't. You know what I mean? Do you see what I'm saying? Like, if you knew, like, if they found out, like, there was, like, 50 killings that happened over the last 25 years. Yeah. And it was Jerry Seinfeld. Right. And you're like, holy crap. Jerry Seinfeld's been, this is fake, I'm making this up, um, been murdering people for 25 years. Like, could you watch, could you watch Seinfeld anymore and think of it as the same way? I think I could. Really? Yeah, I don't. I, I, like, I Seinfeld's my number one show. I love it. I love everything about it. Maybe I if he murdered I, somebody that I knew, <laughs> I'd be like, <laughs> I'd be like, I'm not watching that. But you know, it just feels so distant. I I agree with you to a certain extent, but where does the line come in? That's a good question. Where does the line come in? Where you're like, wait a minute, I cannot watch <laughs> I'm not that crossing anymore. that line. Yeah. So murders off the table and date rapes off the table. <laughs> Apparently. I don't know. I don't know what else there is, I guess. Yeah, I don't know either. I guess there isn't a line. I'll watch everything. I mean, controversial, politics, blah, 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 whatever. Yeah. But we had a president that like did all that stuff. That's true. And nobody seems to care about that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that is true. I'm not talking I mean, about current president. I'm talking about... Past presidents There's and been a, current president. I mean, there, there have been so many past presidents that I would consider terrible having murdered. Oh, I'm sure. You know, and nobody does talk about that. You're right. Yeah. Wow. Hot button issue. That's and we, there's presidents that have like documentedly like raped people. Yeah. Nobody seems to care. No. And they're kind of loved. Yeah. <laughs> Some of them are kind of loved. I don't know. It's just odd. It's odd that people, the way people pick and choose. But I, I don't I think, think it's a bad thing to separate, to be able to car- compartmentalize in your brain that's, certain things. And I mean, that's part of being an adult. That's what I was going to say is like, it's a differentiation of people. This, this whole mindset that we got going on now of just throw it all away. It's very childish. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, it, it pretends to live in a world that's simple, that's black and white, which is not, it's not that way. The w- way the world works. And I think the reason why that's happening is because there's a whole generation of people that grew up in a world that was black and white. Yeah. That never had to really struggle for anything. That never really had anything not go their way. Right. You know, and so... They're able to go and say, oh, that person did that one thing. Well, they're garbage. So why should we promote anything they have to do? Throw it all out. Yeah. Garbage. 
You know what I mean? Yeah. But it's not that simple. Like the, there's situations, you know, to the whole situ. You know, I blame everything on, um, how we are, like instantly gratified. Everything we do, everything we have, it's instant gratification. So if something does not satisfy you right now, you could move on to something else that does. Yeah. And you can forget about it. Yeah. So that's the world we live in to where we can forget about anything we don't like and focus on what we do like in the present. It, it, it probably goes back to like the immediate starting from the 90s, basically with computers, like the immediate um, the pace of innovation has become so fast that that's what it is yeah and like every every nobody has any patience like it, it didn't used to be like that you know no. what i mean you had to wait like when you were like oh man i want this one thing to exist or change and then like over the course of 15 years something evolves from that and, idea and but now it's like if it doesn't happen within six months fuck it and we're on the fringe of that like we like when we were growing up we didn't necessarily have all of that instant gratification or like what what was being created like it was being created in our childhood until our adulthood now when we have that our kids are going to be so much different than that yeah that technology that really only exists first of all in technology but it's bled over into every facet of our being people want that in medicine people want that in entertainment people want that in, in vehicles they want that in everything they're like they want that pace of innovation. and But it all costs resources. That's the issue. Yes. Well, resources are a huge issue, <laughs> yeah. especially on, in today's day and age. Like computer, like technological resources are abundant, right? So like computing power can abundantly, exponentially increase. Which because it has. It, we hold in our hands a computer that is more powerful than what sent us to the moon. Right. But and, and relatively, I, I understand that it's not easy, and I understand there's people that create this stuff, and that are geniuses that do this stuff. But relatively, you're taking an infinite resource and utilizing it at an exponential rate. But there are certain things in life that are not infinite resources. You know what I mean? Like, there's so many things. <laughs> but another thing, like if you're thinking into the future, like right now, we think of those people as geniuses. In the future, are they going to be thought of as geniuses or are they going to be thought of as like, well, this was kind of like weird. You should have known this. It always gets me back to something I always think Isn't about. Isn't that weird? People think that they're smarter now than people were 100 years ago. Completely not true. When you're I don't trying think it's to, true. No, I don't think so either. When you're trying to figure out something that's never existed, when you're talking about something as simple as a car, like the engineering of a vehicle to someone that has never had a vehicle is the same thing as us trying to make a new computer that has never existed. Yeah. Right. It's just on a different scale. I, I also think people just have no concept of what intelligence is. Oh man. Now we're getting deep. You know what I mean? They don't though. People don't understand what that means. When you say that word, they I, don't, they think they're smarter now because they have an iPhone and a computer that doesn't make you smarter. It's making us dumber. <laughs> It's <laughs> 100%. I can't remember a phone number now. I cannot, I could not tell you what your phone number is because you're in my phone as Chris Harford. Yeah. So I click Chris Harford and it dials. I don't necessarily me. know if that's intelligence though. I mean like, I'm, I think people's critical thinking abilities have, I, I think. It's the same thing. I like when, before I had to remember, like when I was a kid, you had to remember phone numbers to dial them on a phone to call someone. You had to remember certain things because something else didn't do it for you. Yeah. But now we have the ability for everything else to remember it for us, and, and it just does things. Yeah. At a touch of a button, things will do it for you, and you don't have to physically remember or compute anything. Right. Well, and that's it. it one aspect of this people might not understand is, is in farming. This is a big one, right? So, you know, 30 years ago or back in the 70s or 80s, you know, these guys, these farmers, they had a, if they had a problem, they had to go out with a torch and a welder and build a solution. Yes. Or make something else that worked because there wasn't an industry of that. Right. And now it's going out and just buying the solution. Yes. Everything is bought. Yeah. It's not made. It's just interesting. It's, 
a very deep conversation. But well, I do have some I'm watching that I would like to talk about. And okay. We don't have a lot of time left now. All right. Do you have any it. more? No, that was the only thing that I've... I'll do this really quickly um, because there's one main one I want to talk about. I've been continuing to watch The Righteous Gemstones. Oh, you have? On HBO. It's a week-to-week show. So I'm not going to talk about it a ton until the end of it because I don't want to sit here and rehash it every week. It's really good. You like it it a lot. Fantastic. Okay. Really funny. Amazing cast. Very dark comedy. Everything John Goodman's in. I'm in And for. he's a relatively small part of really? the show. Um, it's mainly Danny McBride oh. and uh, Adam Devine. And I don't know what their sister's That's name the is. That's the guy's name. Yeah. We couldn't and, think of uh, his name. They're really funny. Time. And it, it's it's a ridiculous show, obviously. Yeah. It's a it's like a ridiculous. I wouldn't say as ridiculous as like Eastbound and Down. But it's, it's very much like Vice Principles. If you ever watched his show Vice Principles. Yeah. It's kind of like that. Um the premise is, is, is goofy, but it's very dark, very, very dark show. Um, okay. And I love dark comedies. Yeah. And it, it, I can't, it's great. Everybody needs to be watching The Righteous. What's Simpsons. that on? It's on HBO. HBO. It's an HBO show. Okay. Um, real quickly, I started watching the new Dark Crystal show. Oh, did on you? On Netflix. Gosh, I was going to start it. Haven't gotten too far into it. Um, I watched the first episode. It, I, I was floored, A, by the amount of reverence they had to the original it's the same man it is jim henson's puppet muppet company whatever yes and it's the muppets or it's they're not the muppets but you know what i mean um, it's they're practical puppets. effects they're, yeah practical um they but they mixed it with some great like visuals they've definitely upped the budget um i i really forgot how much i love the original movie yes. first off and am super excited because they took a short movie, basically, yeah. and they're creating. You don't realize how they can expand in this gigantic you world. Know, world, yeah. You know, so it's going to create a, a universe like Lord of the Rings or Dune or something like that. It's going to create that whole universe, and we get to live and play in that. And I know the puppets are a little goofy. They are for sure, very goofy. They didn't like up the production value of the puppets because they had more money. They're like the original yeah. things. Um, so and, and they, that was the goal. They wanted to keep it the same. It looks goofy at times, but um, I think it's going to be really good, and I'm excited to watch more. But I got sidetracked by that show because Amazon, just lighting the world on fire, dropped their new show. I, I don't know what is going on over there. <laughs> They're doing something right. They're just blowing it out of the water. It's because they got... The cage. All the money, yeah. Because they had you know, the, the Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. They had The Boys. They've the had... Bo- the Boys changed things. Uh, 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 shows that are unbelievable. And then they dropped this little gem that I didn't even know about into the, our hands. And it's called Carnival Row. I I haven't even heard of this. It's a uh, big, big, big budget. It's a big deal. Have I heard of this? Um, it's their new show. They just launched it um, starring Orlando Bloom. So they went big. They got Orlando mm. Bloom. He's great in it. Man, I forgot how much I missed seeing him because I haven't seen him in much. No, the he's last thing I can. Caribbean. Yeah, that's the last thing I remember him being. Um, in. He's been in a couple other really good movies. He was in that one where where they did like they were in the Middle East for the, like the Crusades. That was pretty good. Kingdom of Heaven, maybe. That's an old movie. Yeah, it's it's older. Um, he's super good in it. It is a uh, how do I describe this? It's a Victorian era world. He is a police inspector. Okay. The world in which this inhabits is a large universe as well um, of men, the fae, they call them, which are fairies. Oh. Um, the pucks, which are, you know, horns on their head and the hoofs on the bottom. It's like the integration of men into these different. Uh, fantasy character. Is this like Saga? It looks just, it's like Saga. That reminds me of Saga. It it very much reminds you of Saga. It's Saga, the TV show, but in a Victorian era, horror, crime, steampunky, springs and things, industrial age world. There's lots of magic. There's lots of mythical beasts, but it takes the premise, um, of course, because it's 2019 and relates it to basically 
all of these different worlds, like the land of the Fae, the fairies, which is basically Ireland. Okay. For all intents and purposes. Makes sense. And these other animals and beasts that are in different areas, the, the men come and basically start taking over these areas and they have different, these two different factions of men. <laughs> Leave it to the man. Um, fighting. And this one faction, the Berg, which is where this is set, actually fought with the Fae against the invading army, which I don't know what they'd be, maybe like almost kind of in like a Germany type way situation. Okay. Um, and so they basically lost that war. This is like prior to the show. So all of these Fae, these fairies and these pucks and these other things have come to this, the Berg, which is basically England um, in this Victorian era, but they're refugees essentially. Oh, and they're lower than lower class citizens. I mean, they're, and all the people that live in this are, we hate these. I mean, it's very, an immigration story, you know, it's basically they, we hate, you know, the, their servants or their indentured servants, or they're a lower class. They're a servant class. Uh, They can't go in. Like for example, the Fae cannot go into like a museum on a, unaccompanied by a human. Really? And so the premise of the show, that's the backdrop of this show, this very tense environment. And, and they do a very good job of creating a really tense feeling environment at all times. Okay. It's also very dark. There's lots of dark magic and, and things like that that play into this. But the central story is um, Orlando Bloom's character, who's an inspector. And in a sense, it's kind of a police drama procedural type yeah. thing buddy cap story no <laughs> oh, okay <laughs> more like a <laughs> gritty cop story okay where he's like investigating uh murders essentially strings of murders yep serial killers but they all there's lots of twists and turns and behind it all there's kind of the political drama of the parliament one side of the parliament's like pro-immigration one side's very anti-immigration um it's a very right and left political in that yeah. in that respect so they they bring all that in to early on you kind of get the idea of like oh, more of this right that's more of this like um that's how it social sounds. justice warrior yeah that's stuff. how it sounds but um they they play it off right and and you kind of disappear into this world and um so the central story is him as this police inspector and when he was off at war in the land of the Fae. The Fae, yeah. He, they fought alongside the fairies, right? And he fell in love with one of them. Oh. And... So it is like Saga. Very much so. <laughs> and they split up, and basically he comes back. Um, she stays there. Eventually, she gets back over there. Um, there's lots of drama there, of course. There's drama all over the place, but... And then there's a huge reveal with him, and it sets the tone up for season two masterfully. Um, he's this, a horny goat. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> okay. But there's also this subplot where they're like the rich elite, right? Are very, very racist. Like all their servants are of course they are. pox, um, which they call them, which are the horn people, the horny goats. And, but this rich puck bought who's very, very rich and they don't know why. Yeah. How he made his fortune somewhere else in the world. Anyway, he moved there and he buys this house in this like really high end area where all the mansions and all the rich people live and it's like a social travesty you know and huh. so their next door neighbors this boy or this man and wo- woman who are brother and sister their parents had died there inherited their fortune like are appalled by this but then slowly there's relationships form it is a great freaking show is it's it, a must watch show. how many episodes is it eight maybe Hour long. Eight hour long episodes. The production quality is out of this world. Really? The production quality is incredible. The amount of money they spent on this is incredible. The look, the cinematography, uh, the costume design. This is, this has got words written all over it. Who who else? Is there there anybody else in it that's a big name besides Orlando Bloom? There's a couple guys in it that you'll recognize, but I don't know their names. Yeah. The Chancellor, who's one of the main, um, he's the Chancellor of the Parliament. Yeah. He's recognizable. I can't remember his name. Um, other than that, no. The girl who plays the main girl who's the fairy is unbelievably good. I can't, I don't know that I've seen her in anything, to be honest. Um, this is a home run. Uh, 
I absolutely loved it. It's very much like Saga. I, in fact, when I was watching it, I'm like, man, this this takes Saga out of space and puts it in Victorian England yeah. in an immigration crisis. And it, it's a very, very interesting show. Hmm. Well, you sold me. Oh, I, I, I would absolutely watch that. And I'm going to watch that. And the great thing about it is it takes all of that, which would turn some people off, but it brings in the whole like police... Uh, almost a true detective vibe. Oof. It's like true detective in the land of Saga in Victorian England. Wow. <laughs> yeah. It does have watch very it. strong true detective vibes now that I'm thinking about it. Okay. I, so we have I don't know it. where this show came from. I never heard anything about I know, it. No, I have not heard much and about And Carnival that Row is like the street in this town where like all the shady shit goes on. It's like where all the brothels are. And, okay. You know, um. And it's got great twists and turns. The, the The ending is a huge, huge, huge spoiler twist and turn that throws you all around. But I will say, you'll see it, probably see it coming. I did a couple episodes before. And you really? kind of, you know what's going to happen. Is but that kind of like a I think they could have, no, but it would have been way more mind-blowing if you didn't figure it out ahead of time. Right. I don't know that you could watch it without necessarily figuring, I mean, you pr- got a pretty good idea by the end what the big turn's going to be. Okay. But there is one big turn with Orlando Bloom's character that does throw you pretty big. It's really good, man. Awesome. Check it out. Carnival Row. I, I can't wait for season two and season one just dropped. So I'm like, oh my God, I got to wait. What? I don't even know how long. I don't did know they, if they could did, turn this show around in a year. It's, did Amazon do that week by week? Or no, is it? No, it was a full all drop. Does yeah. One. Netflix, that's another news thing that I forgot to say, is Netflix is going to start putting certain shows out week to week. I don't know if I like that. I don't like it at I all. I don't like that. I don't think Netflix should do it. They're trying that's to what change HBO it up, does. But... And, uh, it's kind and of Amazon, annoying. Amazon did that with a few shows, too. Did it? Yeah, and I am not a fan of it. The whole reason I went to streaming services is to get all of it in one shot. Yeah. Like I could watch it whenever I wanted instead of wait I don't know. There's something really great about waiting week to week in a show. You live with it a lot longer. Absolutely. We you were, don't digest it as a movie. It's and throw back it away. to the whole like instant gratification thing. Right. Like That's what we want. But I will say in the case of this show, if it was a week to week show, I think it could potentially be harder to watch. It's okay. definitely one that's great for binging because it's so heavy. Really? I could see it on one of those. Some shows are so heavy that like if you're watching them week to week, you it, it's almost like too exhausting. Yeah. And this one, you just get sucked in. You watch it. It's eight episodes. It doesn't take long to watch. It's just like The Boys. I think it's the same length and everything. And I watched The Boys this really fast. Eight How episodes. How did you watch this? Where, where did you find the time to watch eight episodes of the show? I've been watching it at night. I just got, I got hooked, man. I got hooked. I tell you what. I went to a 10-hour shift. Uh, I only work four days a week now but man i go to bed a heck of a lot earlier <laughs> so like gotta wake up early yeah well that's i tough. don't go to bed early so yeah, i know i got this little thing that tracks my sleep on my phone which is really cool it's called sleep cycle yeah and it stays on all night long and the, uh the it works off the microphone and it keeps saying like sleep more no sleep more no no, <laughs> no. so what it does is it can like detect your movements at night and that's how it determines like how deep of a sleep you are. Yeah. And it'll actually, if you snore at all, which I don't really too much, but Oof, it'll I record do. segments of every time you snored and you can listen to them and it'll say you snored for three minutes. Seven last hours. Night. <laughs> uh, the most I've had, and I don't snore other than if I've been drinking, the most yeah. I have was like 15 minutes. Oh my gosh. Mine would be off the charts. But it takes all that data, like how long you slept how much you moved around, how deep of a sleep you got into, how much you snored, and it gives you a sleep score. Wow! At the end of the night, when you when you wake up first thing in the morning, is this part of a? It's an app you have to buy. I think it's two bucks. Is it on like an Apple Watch or? Um, it, you can run it off your watch, but you just need your phone. That's it. You just set it on the table next to you in a certain position. I do that. And every um, night, anyways. And it it uses the microphone to record by the sounds you're making at night and how you're tossing or moving. And it actually, I had this app before and you set it on your bed and it worked off the accelerometer by oh, vibration. Yeah. 
but it seems to work better now with this microphone. I was going to say, because I've got one of those spongy beds that doesn't transfer right. movement. Well, the cool thing about it is, so if you got to wake up at like 6.30. Or 4.15. Whatever. <laughs> whatever it is. You can set it to, you can set it to just wake you up at 6.30. Or you can set it to do like the active wake up. Where in any time for the half an hour preceding that, it will pick when you're in your lightest sleep. And wake you and up. And wake you up then. Oh, that's what I need. And it has this really awesome, really gentle. Um, it really works too because like sometimes it'll be a half an hour before my alarm goes off. But you can kind of, you're dreaming, you know. Yeah. So you're pretty light sleep, I think. And you can kind of slowly, it's a really soft, like melodic alarm clock. Yeah. And you can slowly hear it like come into your dream as like background music. And then slowly in your dream, you start to realize I'm like, oh, that's the music. And then you're awake. Wow. It's kind of cool. That's the most interesting thing you've said all night. <laughs> Sleep cycle. And uh, I'm in. And it reco- it's so cool. There was What's it cost? I think it's $2.99. Oof. Steep. So I really like it. I'm going to buy it. Now I'm obsessed with getting like a higher sleep score. The best I've gotten is like 90%. That's pretty good. But anyway, the reason I brought it up. Can you get 100%? I'm sure you can. The problem is you have to sleep more than six hours in a night probably because every night I wake. Oh, that was the thing. When you wake up first That's... thing in the morning and grab your watch, it turns your light on and you put your finger on the camera and it takes your resting heart rate when you wake up. What? Yeah. How does this work? The light shines on your finger and makes it like the color so you put your finger over the camera and it can see your pulse this is magic and it takes your heart rate so then it tracks that too your heart rate when you wake up that's unbelievable yeah it's really cool who thinks of this stuff i don't know but it's really neat like that's unbelievable i'm going to buy it like as soon as we stop this <laughs> i really really <laughs> enjoy it now i just want to get more sleep like i found myself trying to go to bed earlier so i can get a bigger sleep score yeah because like it wants you to sleep eight hours. <laughs> Is that a thing? Yeah. Or nine <laughs> hours. Or it even says like nine or ten would be better. And you're like, mm. <sighs> that's not going to happen. If I'm going to sleep. I'd have to go to bed at like six, seven o'clock. Yeah. That's just not going to happen for me. And you get, yeah, you wake up at four. Yeah. Four thirty. Four fifteen. Four fifteen. You would have to go to bed. How, when would you have to go to bed to get 10 hours of sleep? Uh, six fifteen. No. Yeah. Oh, 10 hours. Yeah, for 10 hours. Yeah, they have to go to bed at 6.15. That's not going to happen. Ever. Even to get 8, you'd have to get go to bed at 8.15. Right. That doesn't happen either. Yeah. Not even close. My kids don't even go to bed that early. Yeah, it's hard <laughs> to get kids to go to bed that early. It's not going to happen, but well, uh, that's a cool app. We are over our time. We're done for this episode of Snarf Talk. And this should be coming out on Fridays. As you guys remember, we're coming out on Fridays. Yes. Um, we might shift that and come out on Tuesdays. We just need to figure out a time when we're willing to give you guys a week and a half between episodes. Right. I think Tuesdays would be a better release date. Do you? Yeah, I do. Okay. Um, also, check out uh, YouTube.com slash Snarf Comics. We got video. All of our podcasts are on there for video, but also we have little videos we put out of Wizard. Um, we're going to have one um, for the Renaissance Fair. We have clips and interviews coming out um, for maybe, all of our Snarf Talk road maybe trips. Maybe a music video. Yeah, maybe. We discussed that. I think we might do a music video. Yeah. We just have to buy the rights to a song. We can do it. <laughs> um, check out our Instagram at Snarf Comics. We're on Facebook as well at Snarf yep. Comics and uh, not occasionally on Twitter. Eh, every and, once in uh, a while. Yeah, that's it. All right. All right. See you guys. Check you later. We're supposed to do the whole for Snarf Talk. For, yeah. For Snarf Talk this week. I'm Jerry. I'm Chris. See, See ya. ya.